Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Heatham Field in Fremont, Nebraska, as it's time for Midland University Women's Lacrosse on MidlandAthletics.com and BSDN Live. Along with Austin McNorton, I'm Rich Ray. Good to have you along. Good to see you. How are you? Fantastic, man. I have uh, two new humans in the world, That's and it's been quite the, quite the whirlwind for the past <laughs> couple months. Congratulations to you and your thank wife. You, thank uh, you. Twin girls? Yes, twin girls. Oh, yeah, Sandy. they're still in the NICU, so hopefully we'll <laughs> be able to bring them home, and then the real fun begins. That'll be outstanding. Congratulations. <laughs> thank you. And uh, good to have you along. And uh, we'll try to get our logo off there, and uh, we will uh, get ready for our uh, broadcast here between Midland and Culver Stockton and the Wildcats. And to kind of preview this contest, Midland is coming in with a record of 3-8 and eight on the season. They're riding a three-game losing streak after dropping a 14-8 to eight contest at Ottawa yesterday afternoon in Ottawa, Kansas. The Warriors fell behind 7-1 to in the opening quarter, but kept battling against the Braves. And uh, Ottawa's a team that's receiving votes in the latest NAIA coaches poll, uh, which is uh, ranks the top 10 teams. Uh, but a bright spot for Midland was Madeline Edward. We'll talk a lot about her. She's the five foot seven senior from Highlands Ranch, Colorado. Uh, she scored six goals in the loss yesterday, and she's raised, raised her season goal tally now to 27. And of the 11 games played this year, she has scored in all but one game so far this year, and she actually had a streak that was going there for a while where she had uh, uh, 30 games that uh, she had uh, scored a goal in just dating back to the last three seasons. Culver Stockton enters today's contest with a record of 4-5. and five. The Wildcats, they're coming off a 17-1 to one win over Mount Mercy on Friday afternoon. And in that game against the first-year program, Culver Stockton took control early in a 13-1 to one lead at the halftime break and then coasted with four goals after the break for the decisive win over the Mustangs. Uh, now the duo of Kalen Quarles and Lauren Graving, uh, they lead the way offensively as they have for most of the year. And uh, for Quarles and Graving, uh, uh, Quarles added eight goals to her season tally of 31, while Graving added five goals to her season total of 19. And the next highest goal scorer is Carson Jackson, who has a total of five. Now, after today's regular season finale uh, for Midland, they'll be begin preparing for the KCAC postseason tournament. Now, with only a handful of games left among the conference schools, the Warriors have clinched the number four seed with a one and three record. The University of St. Mary could match Midland's conference mark, but the Warriors own the tiebreaker after defeating the Spires earlier in the season by a score of 16 to three. The most likely opponent would be Missouri Baptist, the Spartans, who are ranked number five nationally. They're unbeaten in KCAC play at three and zero. Oh, with a matchup with the University of uh, Science, Health, and Pharmacy looming next Saturday. Now, the 2024 KCAC Lacrosse Tournament is going to be held in St. Louis, and that's on April 18th and the 20th. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the starting lineups for today's contest with visiting Culver Stockton Wildcats, who are coached by Caitlin Erickson in her fifth season and assisted by Madison Reed. In the middle is a five foot five sophomore from Kansas City, Missouri, number one, Bella Olson. In midfield is a five foot eight freshman from Henderson, Nevada, number four, Kaylin Quarles. As an attacking position is a five foot one freshman from Chicago, number six, Carson Jackson. At an attacker is a five foot eight sophomore from Wentzville, Missouri, number ten, Emily Green. At attacker and also defender is a five foot seven freshman from Manchester, Missouri, number eleven, Riley Boyce. At defender is a five foot five senior from Naperville, Illinois, number thirteen, Jasmine Simpson. At defender, a five foot five senior from Lake Matthews, California, number fourteen is Brooke Donnelly. At attacker is a five foot six graduate student from Tucson, Arizona, number fifteen, Aliyah Ortiz. At defender, a five foot nine sophomore from Clarksville, Tennessee, number eighteen, Katie DeCree. At midfield, a five foot seven freshman from St. Louis is number twenty one, Lauren Grebing. At defender, a five foot four senior from Hollywood, Florida, number twenty three, Anaya Lopez. And in goal for the Wildcats today is a five foot ten sophomore from Overland Park, Kansas, number thirty five, and that is Jillian Vervonic. Vervonic in goal for Culver Stockton. For Midland, coached by Macy J. At defender, five foot four freshman from Kalispell, Montana, number two, Cadence Rose. At attacker, a five foot nine sophomore from Billings, Montana, number three, Rylan Nelson. At defender, a five foot six junior from Blue Springs, Missouri, number five, Caitlin Bowers. At attacker, a five foot three freshman from Benton, Arkansas, number seven, Madikin Marusik. At midfield, a five foot seven senior from Highlands Ranch, Colorado, number eight, Madeline Edwards. 
At attacker, a six-foot junior from Claremont, Florida, number 10, Chloe Harrison. At defender, a five-foot-five senior from St. George, Utah, number 12, Shea Peterson. At midfield and defender, a five-foot-five junior from Vero Beach, Florida, is number 17, Jewel Milliman. At defender, a five-foot-seven junior from Helena, Montana, number 20, Ashley Boyd. At defender, a five-foot-nine sophomore from Kingwood, Texas, number 23, Annika Turner. In goal is a five-foot-nine senior from Winter Haven, Florida, number 26, Christina Myers. And attacker, a five-foot-three sophomore from Kingwood, Texas, number 40, Alexis Marsh. We'll pause now for the national anthem. That's the National Anthem here at Heaton Field in Fremont, Midland, and Culver Stockton Women's Lacrosse. Let's take a quick break, and we'll be back for the opening uh, draw control when we return on MidlandAthletics.com and BSDN Live. If you're looking for a new career, Dollar General is looking for you. Hiring all positions and all shifts, they are looking for you with a starting pay up to $22 an hour with a $2,000 sign-on bonus. You can find details by going to dollargeneral.com slash careers or by texting DG Warehouse to 25,000. Must be 18 or older, but again, starting pay up to $22 an hour with a $2,000 sign-on bonus. Contact them now, dollargeneral.com slash careers. Nebraska, where hardworking hands build incredible things. Built this thing from the ground up out of nothing. Gave it everything, now look at what it's given back. We know you put your heart into your business, because that's what Nebraskans do. As a local bank, we put our hearts into helping you. Because we're not just a bank in Nebraska, we're Nebraska in a bank. Pinnacle Bank, the way banking should be. Back at Heaton Field in Fremont with Austin McNorton. Rich Ray with you for our KCAC Women's Lacrosse, the Midland Warriors, and the Culver Stockton Wildcats. Weather-wise here this afternoon, it is cloudy, it is overcast, and it is breezy. The wind's been blowing at a gale force the last couple of days. And uh, <laughs> yes. we're at 56 degrees right now. Winds are out of the south, strong at about 25 miles per hour. And they're, in about an hour from now, there's a 50-50 shot that we might get some rain in this contest as well. So could I'll be, make it a little more interesting. It could be wet when we get to the second half of this one. So we're about ready for our opening draw control. And for uh, the uh, Warriors, it looks like it is Jewel Milliman who will be taking it for Midland, and we'll get the Culver Stockton player to turn around for me, and uh, I believe it's Lauren Grieving, who, yeah, Lauren Grieving is going to take the draw control for the Culver Stockton Wildcats as we are about set to get things underway. And again, this is the regular season finale for Midland, and Culver Stockton actually has two more contests uh, before potential uh, postseason play. They're in action on Wednesday when they play at St. Ambrose against the Bees and a 4 o'clock contest uh, coming up in Davenport coming up on Wednesday afternoon. So the officials making sure the nets are all properly secured, and we'll get set for our opening draw control of this afternoon's contest. Midland and Culver Stockton women's lacrosse right here on MidlandAthletics.com and BSDN Live. All right, we're underway, and the draw control will be won by the Wildcats as it'll be uh, worked up here to the uh, right side. And bringing it down the right edge will be Kaylin Quarles. Keep an eye on her number four. She's the top scorer for the Wildcats here this season. Ball ends up on the ground and will be scooped up by Emily Green. And uh, Green will work the offense around the perimeter over to the far left side. As Lauren Grieving will pass it on over to the left. And now the uh, Wildcats will bring it back up to the point. And pass inside gets knocked down. Scramble for the ground ball. And it will be scooped up by the Wildcats. And now handling it will be Bella Olsen. 
Into the right side, retreating. And this is Grieving who has it. Grieving works around the screen up near the uh, top of the fan. Now I'll we'll swing it on over to the left to Olsen. Now I've got it inside. Ball's knocked loose. We're going to have a whistle, and I believe we're going to ha have a foul here against Midland. Looks like there was some heavy contact on Shea Peterson. So it will be a free position shot coming up here for the uh, Wildcats, and it's going to be saved as the ball is loose, scrambled for. Still on the ground. Waiting for somebody to get control of it. And it will roll all the way over to the uh, Midland goalkeeper. And he was able to pick it up was Christina Myers. So Midland able to withstand the uh, first opportunity from Culver Stockton. Here are the Warriors on the move with it now. Pass in the middle of Chloe Harrison. She will put a shot down low and score. Chloe Harrison gets on the board for Midland as the Warriors with quick transition uh, going from the save down the field and a good pass in the middle to Harrison who was able to actually bounce it underneath of the uh, stick of the goalkeeper in Vervonic, and Midland is on the board first. Boy, not messing around. That was so quick in the transition. Great passing. Yeah, exactly. Good execution. I mean, really. You get the the ball finally scooped up after a scramble for it, and the next thing you know, you're the other way, and you're up 1-0. Chloe Harrison scoring, assisted by Madigan Maruzic on the play. So Midland leads 1-0, 13-27 to go here in the opening quarter. As we're ready for the next draw control. And it'll be handled by Culver Stockton. Handling it is Kaylin Corals. Corals will run right down through the middle and had her stick knocked out of her hand as she's tried to attempt a shot. And in the battle for the ball, it will be controlled by the Wildcats. All played to the left side. You know what's kind of unique about this if you're familiar here with the eastern Nebraska area and this location as far as high schools are concerned? Culver Stockton are the Wildcats, and they are black and blue and white. You go right down the road to Cedar Bluffs High School, they are the Wildcats, and they are black and blue and white. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, so we're going to have a foul here. It looks like a yellow card will be uh, handed out. As have coming off the field here for just a little bit will be Annika Turner. So the Wildcats will be up a player as Turner comes off, and looks like we'll have a free position shot upcoming for – Culver Stockton, right from the top of the fan. As soon as the officials get it all marked down on their cards, we'll get ready for this free position shot. And here's the attempt, and it's saved by Myers. Myers does a nice job to knock it down, and then Myers will pick it up back behind the net. So Christina Myers with a couple of nice saves uh, for Midland there. one nothing Midland with the lead. Here come the Warriors on the move. Here's Harrison. Harrison working on over to her left side. Tries to pass it into the middle. It got knocked down right in front of the crease. And the ball will squirt out to the left where Harrison will go pick it back up. Harrison will give it off to Jewel Milliman. And Milliman will pass the point. It was intended for Maruzic. Got knocked down, flipped high into the air, and then chased down by Ryland Nelson. Nelson uh, worked her way in and now will retreat and tries to pass it back. And the Warriors have a little trouble uh, passing it cleanly, but Milliman will chase it back down. She'll give it off now to Maruzic. And Maruzic fakes left and goes to her right, moves her way in, tries to pass in front where it's knocked down by one of the Wildcats. Now a battle for the ground ball will be taken out of there by Culver Stockton's Bella Olson. Olson will play it up the field. And now the Wildcats will pass around as Emily Green will... Pass it backward, and now across midfield. Well, Cats have it knocked down. Battle for it, taken away as the Warriors come up with it, and that's Shea Peterson. Peterson circles back around here, getting some contact, and they have the ball knocked away. Wildcats come up with it. And now it's played on up to the point. Handling it is Lauren Grieving. So far, Midland has done a good job of not allowing any transition opportunities for the Wildcats. Here's a shot inside, and Myers able to knock it down right in front. We've got a whistle, and and we're going to have Midland with possession here. So the Warriors looking to clear and getting it up the field, and it is taken by Ashley Boyd and knocked away. Turnover home 20. The Wildcats will come away with it. 
over on the far left wing. From the left side, handling things is Emily Green. Green being defended aggressively by Annika Turner, who's back on the field. And Turner gets the turnover. And she'll give it off now to Edwards. Madeline Edwards, who scored six goals in yesterday's loss. 27 now on the season for Midland for the senior. We'll work it off the right side. Shot attempt goes wide. And on the chase for the ball, as it goes out, it'll be Midland possession. So handling it for the Warriors will be Alexis Marshall. Marshall will bring the ball back into play here on the left wing. And we'll give it off to Madigan Maruzic. Maruzic up top to Harrison. Harrison swings it on up to the point. Milliman will work it around the perimeter to the right side. Here's a pass inside to the middle. Shot knocked down as Vervonik was just able to get a piece of it. And it rolled out of the crease. Now on a battle for the ground ball to our left. It will be scooped up by the Wildcats. So Culver Stockton has the possession. The Wildcats will now bring it up the field. Up the near side with it is Anaya Lopez. Now we got a whistle. And I think we had a foul here on Midland. This is on Annika Turner. So it'll be Culver Stockton possession at the point of the foul. And this is Lopez. She'll play it into the middle. Wildcats will work it across midfield now. Handling the ball is Jasmine Simpson. Now on over to the far left edge. It is played up high to Carson Jackson. Jackson works her way in. Can't get a shot off as of yet. Retreats a little bit. Passes back behind the net. Handling the ball is Riley Boyce. Now works it over the far left side. Pass inside, knocked down. Getting a piece of it was Shea Peterson. The Warriors come up with it on the turnover. Down the field comes Madeline Edwards. Find, trying to find Harrison, but a little too high, and it goes out of bounds, and Midland turns it over. So Culver Stockton will get possession of the ball. We have 8.36 to go in the opening quarter. Midland leads it by a score of 1 to nothing, And the Wildcats will put it back in play. This is Bella Olson. She'll play it to the right side now to Carson Jackson. Jackson on the right wing will survey things and let her teammates get set up offensively. Jackson will work around a teammate's screen, which, by the way, is an Ill is a legal screen, and you can just argue all you want about the UConn. And, uh, <laughs> I was just going to say, don't bring up illegal screens <laughs> yeah, at this yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a ball that's knocked loose. Do you have an opinion on that one? That's all, all anyone's talking about. Here's Marshall. He will play it to the right side. <laughs> Nelson will play it into the middle. And scooped up by Harrison. I think it was probably the right call. It's a just foul. It's a foul. At a very, very unfortunate time. Yeah, and a call that you don't see called all the time. <laughs> Even though an illegal screen is probably set every it's possession. A foul, unless you're one of the <laughs> six UConn uh, former players that are on the broadcast. But anyway, it's a different story. Yes, uh, yes. all the ESPN, yes. yes. Uh, picking up the ball here as we're back to uh, lacrosse action is uh, <laughs> Jillian Vervonik. Vervonik's got it now for the Wildcats, and she'll be looking to clear. And she'll play it to the near side. We've got 7.20 to go in the opening quarter. Midland leads by a score of one nothing. Pass in the middle, and that will be controlled by Culver Stockton. Right side with it now. This is Kaylin Quarles. Quarles trying to work her way into the left. Shot attempt, and it's a goal. She just got a pass. Christina Myers in the upper right-hand corner. That's Kaylin Quarles, the freshman from Henderson, Nevada, that scores for Culver Stockton, and that ties the score at one with 7.04 left to go here in the opening quarter. Boy, Myers has been so great here in the early going. She's had a couple of great saves and somehow just missed that one. I mean, it looked like it went in between her arm and her shoulder and hit that top corner. That was perfect. It was quite an athletic play by the freshman Corals because, you know, she, was on her, she had the ball on her right side, switches it over to her left, and then she shoots back across her body up into the yeah. upper right-hand corner. Uh, not easy to do. No, no. She made it look easy to do. Yeah. Yep, that's the thing. <laughs> you can watch this and uh, yeah, you could say, well, this player should have done that and this player should have done that. And yeah, hey, Get down there and uh, try to attempt this. And, oh, by the way, you're running up and down the field the entire time as well. Right. 1-1 <laughs> one, one the score. 7-0-4 left in the opening quarter. Yeah, this is ready for the next draw control. And it kind of squirts loose left side and it's going to be kept in play, but then goes out of bounds. Who's going to get control? It's going to be Midland ball. So, Midland with possession, as Madeline Edwards will put it into play. And now we've got a whistle. And the official 
relaying some information left side. Just, I think, indicating that it's going to be a Midland ball near side. Now Edwards will start it. She will pass it left side. She's looking for Harrison, but the phone behind her and Chloe can't keep it in play. So Midland turns it over and Culver Stockton will have possession. The Wildcats have it with 6.36 here to go in the opening quarter. And it is a 1-1 tie. And they're going to... I think reset the possession. There we go. Reset the possession. And now the Wildcats will put it into action. This is Katie DeCrane. She lobs it forward and looking for Lauren Grieving. Grieving picks it up off the bounce and we've got a whistle. Let's see what we got here. There was some contact. So it might have been an offside here. Yeah. I think we had an offside call. I think it's Culver Stockton. Okay. And, and it brings Kaylin Corals off the field. So she might have gotten a car here. And yeah, we're a little confused. I hear the mm -hmm. sports information offices as well because nothing was really reported in what happened. And Corals just comes off the field. We've got 6.06 to go in the quarter. It's a 1 1 tie. This is Nelson on the right side for Midland. She will give it up, looking for Harrison, but uh, thrown behind her and out of bounds. Boy, the Warriors are looking for their tallest uh. player in Chloe Harrison, and she's been really good this year. And just right now, as far as the passing is concerned, it's just a little bit, been a little bit off the money looking for the six-footer. Yeah, and she had a great cut right in front, too, and just passed just a little errant. So we got a whistle, and we're going to have a – wasn't it? Illegal check, but they will play on here. And here come the Wildcats up the right side. Foul on Midland, but they play on. Emily Green has it. Green will work it all the way behind the net here for the Wildcats of Culver Stockton. Pass into the middle. Knock loose. It's free on the ground. Myers trying to scoop it up with her stick, and she does. So Myers has it, and she'll try to clear to the near side looking for Harrison, who tries to play it off the bounce and comes up with it. Harrison gives up a little bit of ground, and now will work her way forward. Boy, she got tripped up. That's heavy contact. And we're going to have a whistle and a foul here. And it's on Kaylin Quarles, who just was off just a moment ago, yep. and she goes back off again. And she gets a yellow here. So how long do you have to sit for a yellow? There are two differences. There are 30-second fouls, and there are 60-second fouls. And this one might be the 60-second variety here. You don't want a red. I can tell you that much. Okay. A red is you're done for the day. It's like in volleyball or in soccer, same, same right. scenario. Here's a pass to the right side, knocked down by Lopez and picked back up by one of her teammates. And Culver Stockton has it now. This is Carson Jackson. Ball is loose over near the far sideline in front of the Midland bench. It's out of bounds, and it will be Midland possession. So the Warriors have it. Bless you. Shea Peterson to put it in play. We didn't ask. What did you name your twins? Harper and Hallie uh -oh. are the twin <laughs> names we went with. You went with two H's. <laughs> yes, we went two H's. You're, you're going to confuse every <laughs> elementary school teacher. Yeah, well, so my wife didn't want to do any rhyming names like a Sarah and Kara or anything. Because like, uh -huh. then that would have really been the ultimate evil that we could ensue upon our <laughs> elementary school teachers. <laughs> so we just did the same, same first letter. So, and yeah. boy, are they dangerously identical. Well, I mean, the there's problem nothing. they're going to have all their life, they're going to be, oh, Austin's your dad. Uh, no, <laughs> yep, Austin, that's Austin's no doubt. Your, Austin's your dad. Okay. <laughs> I did it on purpose. That's right. Out of spite. <laughs> Here's Lopez who has it. Lopez over on the far left side. Works down the far left sideline. Lopez will stop and I'll pass into the middle. Peterson able to knock it down and battle for control of it. It got kicked. And we'll roll all the way to Myers. Wow. Myers able to pick it up. Yeah, we almost saw a soccer game there for a second. Uh, we've got 3.53 left to go here in the first. We're tied at one. And this is Cadence Rose. Rose with a pass looking for Harrison. And Harrison could not come up with it cleanly. Ball's knocked loose. And it's control battle four. We've got a whistle. And I think we've had a slash on a check attempt there. So Midland has the possession. So what's the rule on the kick like that, Rich? I think they just played on. Okay. I mean, unless it's an intentional. Right. That last play didn't look like it was an intentional kick. It just kind of got booted in the battle for control of the ball. 
All right, this is Madeline Edwards. Edwards working her way back around the net, looking for somebody to take it, and she'll give it off now to Nelson. And then Nelson's shot attempt, knocked down in front by Vivranic, and Vivranic will come up with it. So Jillian Vivranic with a nice save there, and now the Wildcats will get ready to clear. And we'll work it left side of Lopez. Three minutes to go in the opening quarter. 1-1 one, one tie between Midland and Culver Stockton. Ball is loose on the far side. Now it is picked up by Kaylin Quarles. Quarles over on the far left side. Passing to the middle and a shot and goal scored as right in front and releasing it quickly was Lauren Grebing. Grebing scores for the Wildcats and Culver Stockton has its first lead of the contest. 2-1 to one the score with 2.47 left to go here in the opening quarter. That's one of the really the first transition opportunities we've seen from the Wildcats today, and boy, did they capitalize on a, on a great cut, find herself right in front, and again, Meyer's been great, but there's nothing really she could have done that time. Yep, Lauren Grieving scoring, assisted by Kaylin Quarles in the play, and so after Midland scored the opening goal of the contest, the Wildcats have scored the next two, and it's now two to one. Now Midland is coming off a uh, the contest they just played yesterday in Ottawa, Kansas. So after playing that one in the afternoon, traveling back and getting ready for this one here today, and we'll have to see how the uh, team uh, works as far as fatigue is concerned yep. and things of that nature because uh, not only with the travel but also you know just like anybody else does, if you're out in the wind and you don't have to do much just for the wind to take a lot of energy yeah, exactly. out of you. Yeah, exactly. Yep. And I guarantee you it was windy down in Ottawa, Kansas. 2.38 to go here in the first. Pass into the middle. Working her way in, and ball's knocked away. It'll be picked up by Riley Boyce. Circling around the left side. We're going to have a whistle, and we're going to have a penalty here against Midland. And it's going to be on Shea Peterson. Peterson's going to get a yellow card here. And I think it was a check that uh, actually made contact with the head of the uh, offensive player. Okay. Thus the reason for the foul. So you'll see that a lot, and you just don't think of it. You see the hands that get pushed, but uh, then again, you know, uh, you got to watch where that uh, stick is as well. And if that stick makes contact with the opposing player's head, more times than not, you're going to see a foul call just like it was there. So Peterson comes off on the yellow, and they're going to move players back here just a little bit. And this is going to be a free position shot from the left side. And taking it will be Aliyah Ortiz. 2.20 left to go here in the first with the Wildcats leading 2-1. to one. All three officials getting closer to each other so they can discuss what's going to occur. All right. Comes the free position. Oh, no, no shot taken there. It was released back outside the fan. Over the far left side. Handling it will be Emily Green. Now I'll pass back behind the net. And the Wildcats look to get things organized. A little three-man weave back behind the net here. <laughs> I was just thinking that. I'm like, they're really making a plan back there. Pass into the middle. is loose and a battle for it. And finally, it'll be covered up and taken by Myers. So Myers has it for Midland. Minute 48 to go in the quarter. Two to one. Culver Stockton with the lead and Midland on the move. Circling around with it is Annika Turner. Turner looking for Milliman. A little high for her. And a battle for the bouncing ball will be taken away by the Wildcats' Anaya Lopez. Pass into the middle. Ends up on the ground. Knocked away. Heavy contact when the Wildcats goes head over heels. But uh, they play on as Myers picks it up in the crease. She'll find Harrison, who finally is able to catch one cleanly. And Harrison is on her way past midfield. And she will work it ahead, looking for Marshall. Marshall off the left side, works her way in into the fan and trying to get a shot off. Contact, had it knocked away. They play on and playing up. Playing in with it is Jillian Vervonic. Vervonic's got it now for Culver Stockton. So Vervonic will get ready to clear. And she will let it sail all the way past midfield. And uh, she will find an open teammate over on the far left side in the closing minute of the quarter. Really using the wind to advantage that time. Boy, she launched that thing. Here's Green. She'll pass it off a little too far and take it away by Midland. And Caitlin Bauer scoops up the ball. So Midland has it. Pass up the field now to Ryland Nelson. 36 seconds to go here in the quarter. Ball gets knocked away. We got a whistle. Official over on the far side signals something. Reaching into his left pocket. And he's going to pull out 
a card, and we cannot see the color. <laughs> I think it's yellow. we got two players that are out for Midland right now, Shea Peterson and also Rylan Nelson. So Culver Stockton is up two players. 31 seconds left to go, and at the first, the Wildcats lead it 2-1. to one. All right, so we'll resume play with the Wildcats in possession over on the far left side. It'll be put in play here by Emily Green. Green plays it up to the point. Pass back left side. Green has a bounce off the top of her stick. She's got to go chase it down. 20 seconds to go in the quarter. Now plays it back behind the net. Midland gets one player back on here. Here's Quarles. Quarles will play it behind the net to the right side. And uh, the shot attempt is knocked down. It rolls all the way to Meyer. She scoops it up. And she's going to probably hold on to this to the end of the quarter. Just got to get rid of it. But uh, doesn't. Nope. That'll bring us to the end of the first quarter of play. So pretty competitive through the first 15 minutes. And the score is Culver Stockton 2 and Midland 1. We'll come back with second quarter action after we take a break. You're watching Midland Women's Lacrosse on MidlandAthletics.com and BSDN Live. Limitless. When you believe there's no limit to what you can achieve. You come to Midland for an education, but you will leave with so much more. We're a small campus with big opportunities, and whatever you need, we'll help you succeed. At Midland, it's your future, your way, with our support every day. Midland University. It's bold. It's an experience. It's family. It's limitless. Launch into this school year with high-speed internet and great offers from Great Plains Communications. Fuel their learning with high speeds up to 1 gig, streaming video, and don't forget to add GPC-managed Wi-Fi for a seamless learning experience throughout your entire home. Contact us today to learn more and ask about our great back-to-school offers in your area, including free installation on any new service. Keep your kids connected, curious, and creative this school year with fast, reliable services from Great Plains Communications as you fuel their learning and your savings. If you're looking for a new career, Dollar General is looking for you. Hiring all positions and all shifts, they are looking for you with a starting pay up to $22 an hour with a $2,000 sign-on bonus. You can find details by going to dollargeneral.com slash careers or by texting DG Warehouse to 25000 Must be 18 or older, but again, starting pay up to $22 an hour with a $2,000 sign-on bonus. Contact them now, dollargeneral.com slash careers. Nebraska, where hardworking hands build incredible things build this thing from the ground up out of us. because that's what nebraskans do as a local bank we put our hearts into helping you because we're not just a bank in nebraska we're nebraska in a bank pinnacle bank the way banking should be we're back at heatham field in fremont alongside austin mcnorton i'm rich ray and one quarter complete in this kcac women's lacrosse battle the Culver Stockton Wildcats lead the Midland Warriors by the score of 2-1. to one. Midland scored the uh, first goal of the contest and uh, did so when uh, Chloe Harrison uh, was assisted by Madika Marusic at 13-27. Uh, but Culver Stockton got on the board at 7-04 as Kaylin Coral scored an unassisted goal to tie it. And then the Wildcats took the lead at 2:47 left in the quarter when uh, Lauren Grieving uh, scored off a of Kaylin Coral's assist. So defenses have pretty much controlled things thus far. We'll see if the offenses are able to get things picked up here in the second quarter of play as the two teams will switch sides. And so here in today here in Fremont, uh -huh. uh, wins at 25 miles per hour consistently out of the uh, Midland baseball team right now is playing at Concordia University in Seward, and they're in the top of the fifth, 17th ranked. Concordia leads that one by a score of 8-1. to one. That's the only other action taking place of Midland Athletics taking place on this Sunday afternoon. So we are about set to get underway here in the second quarter uh, between Midland and Culver Stockton. Again, this is the series finale for Midland, and looks like some two of the officials are talking with Midland head coach Macy J about something right now. And just I'm looking at the body language of one of the officials, and it might have to do with something with how players are checking uh, with the sticks and things of that nature. That could be the case. But uh, for Midland, they are one player down right now as Ryland Nelson is still over on the sideline uh, due to penalty. 
And so our officials continue to chat here a little bit before we will resume play here in the second quarter. I want to remind you that coming up tomorrow, we have Midland Softball out at uh, mm-hmm. the Shilke Complex at Chaplin Field as Midland will be taking on Morningside and a softball doubleheader for the 13th-ranked Midland Softball team. And that will get underway with that doubleheader at 5 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. All right. Draw control. Jewel Milliman against Lauren Grieving. And the draw will be controlled by the Warriors. Milliman catches it on the bounce. So Midland working from left to right now. Here's a pass to Alexis Marshall. Marshall will swing it to Harrison. Harrison's got Midland's lone goal so far this afternoon. We'll swing it over and over to the left side of Milliman. Now on over to Annika Turner. Up high with it is Edwards. Edwards at the top of the fan will give it off, and Turner will work it around to the left side of Milliman. Works her way in. Milliman will attack. Had it knocked out of her stick as she tried to put up a shot. It got knocked around. Lost, and Lopez has it now for Culver Stockton. There's Lopez on the move across midfield. Lopez will pass. It will roll to the near side. And then will be controlled by Carson Jackson. Jackson gives it off. Pass back to the left edge now for Lauren Grieving. Grieving has it for the Wildcats. Plays it up high. And then it is Bella Olson. Olson gives it off to Grieving as the players will switch spots and look for a point of attack here. Grieving over on the far right wing. Being defended by Edwards. Pass knocked down by Edwards. Ball's knocked around. And the control will be Grieving. She will try to backhand a shot that is knocked down in front. And a, for another possession here for the uh, Wildcats. Here's a drive inside. Yeah, it's knocked away and scooped up. Coming up with it for Midland is Annika Turner. Turner runs right through about three Wildcats, and she's going to get fouled by one of the three. <laughs> <laughs> it looked like a running back trying to go off. Yeah, right, right, right tackle. You right. Know? All right, so it'll be picked up by... Annika Turner trying to get it right side of Peterson, but overshot her. It's going to roll to the near sideline. goes out of bounds, and it will be Culver Stockton ball. I think Chloe Harrison thought it went off of a Culver Stockton player, but the official says, nope, it's Wildcat ball. So handling it will be Emily Green, and Green will pass it backward to Katie DeCrane. 12.55 to go before halftime. Culver Stockton leads it 2-1. to one. The whistle, and we're going to have a foul here on Midland. You can call this here on Chloe Harrison. I feel like Midland's gotten a lot of whistles against them here in the early going. They're playing pretty physical out there. The Warriors uh, will do that, especially you're going to see a couple players that are most physical are Annika Turner and Shea Peterson. When they check, they check pretty hard. Here's the ball that's going to roll all the way over by the scores table and out of bounds. And so it's turnover, and Midland will get it back. So it'll be picked up by Madigan Maruzic for the Warriors, and she'll get things started here with 12.35 to go before the half. Midland has it here. Spinning around with it is Ashley Boyd. Plays it to the far left side. And works trying to keep it in play. You asked me before we started this broadcast if the wind would be a factor today. We've seen it in the the passing game. Both teams are having trouble just throwing it right on the money to a teammate right now. Yeah, it seems like every pass, it's just sailed. It's just gone too high. Even against some taller players out there, it still (laughs) still seems to go up over the top of them. This is Jackson. Jackson for Culver Stockton off the right side. We'll reverse it back to Lauren Grieving. Grieving gives it off. As she will find Emily Green. Green now will play it up to the point. Culver Stockton patiently will get its offense set up. Grieving will shuffle to her left. She is contested left side. Pass over to left. And Annika Turner battling to try to take it away. And Myers is back there as well for Midland. And Myers will scoop it up. So Midland gets the possession, and the ball is cleared. Nice pass up to the left side, down the field. Oh, just a little bit too high, and Midland's going to turn the ball over. In the contest that you've seen so far for Midland this year are the eight losses. You can look at those eight losses and pretty much say that the Warriors have hurt themselves with the turnovers. The turnovers and the inability to win the ground ball game, those two aspects of the contest have kept the Warriors from victory this year. Heavy contact here. Ball knocked away, and now we're going to get a whistle. I was wondering if they're going to get one on Mm -hmm. Shea Peterson there. And she turned around, and it was a high check with the stick. It did not draw a card, though, so it will be Culver Stockton getting ready for a free position shot from the top of the fan. 
And taking it will be Carson Jackson. So Jackson, right from the top of the point, passes it off to the right side. It got knocked down. Jackson battles for control of it here. Contested by Boyd. We'll play it on over to the right. And this will be Corals. Corals looking for Grieving. Grieving shot attempt. Myers, where is it? Myers had it in her... Had it in her... In her stick and couldn't find it. And then it stayed in the crease. And what's in the crease, you can't play it as an opposing player. There's a pass in front and a shot attempt. Dumped in and scored. As finding the back of the net for Culver Stockton is Aliyah Ortiz, the graduate student from Tucson, Arizona at a Pima Community College. She scores for Culver Stockton. And the Wildcats, they're on a stretch of three straight goals scored here since Midland scored its opening goal. It's now 3-1 to one in favor of the Wildcats. Yeah, the difference has just been the offensive sets. It seems like Culver Stockton's gotten a little bit more of a rhythm when they're in those sets with, with decent passing. And Midland just hasn't had that many opportunities. And when they do, they just haven't executed as well. So it is now 3-1 to one in favor of Culver Stockton's Wildcats. Culver Stockton, as I mentioned, will be back in action Wednesday. They will play at St. Ambrose against the Bees. And that will be a 4 o'clock contest in the afternoon. Midland will be back in action at the conference tournament when they go to St. Louis April the 18th and 20th. Most likely, it would be Midland taking on the top seed Missouri Baptist. Midland wins the opening draw and control here. And then the ball is knocked away. There's a pass that Carson jumps in the air to try to knock down. And as it hits the ground, Midland will come up with it. Here's Madeline Edwards. Edwards will play at left side of Jewel Milliman. Milliman maneuvers through the Wildcat defense. Here's Ryland Nelson. Nelson plays it inside, was looking for a teammate, but threw it behind her, and now it will be taken away. Lopez has it. Lopez will work it into... The offensive attacking zone now to the right side. Spinning around on the right wing with it here is Riley Boyce. Boyce finds Jackson. Hits the turf. She scoops it up. Jackson gets a screen. Now tries to work her way in. Had it knocked loose. Scoops it back up. Battle for control of it. And turned over. Milliman comes up with it. And Milliman will give it back to her goalkeeper and Christina Myers. 9.21 to go in the half. Culver Stockton leads 3-1. to one. Spinning around with it here is Peterson. Here's a pass intended for Boyd. Heavy contact, and we're going to have a foul of some sort on somebody. <laughs> as yeah. Two players just fell over the top of each other. Now the officials will get together and tell each other what they saw, and then we'll determine what happens from there. It looked like a jump ball, and just we got a green card. It's going to be handed out. On uh, Ashley Boyd. So Boyd will come off here for Midland. So Culver Stockton will be up a player. And this is the one minute variety. The green card's going to be the one minute. The yellows are going to be the 30. Okay. Bella Olson has it now for Culver Stockton. And we'll play it back. Finding Brooke Donnelly. Donnelly plays it to the middle. Wildcats are on the move. Again, up a player here for a little under a minute. Over the left side, it's Boyce. Boyce's pass intercepted. Jewel Milliman on the steal, and she tossed it high. She was looking for Mill She was looking for Madigan Marusek, but the pass was too high and goes out of bounds and turned over. That wind rolled that ball so far. My goodness. Just kept going. You just do that to my golf shot. You know? <laughs> That'd be okay. 8.23 left to go before the half. 3-1. to one, Wildcats lead it. Pass comes back to the near side. Retreating with it is Brooke Donnelly. She's being defended by Alexis Marshall. And there's the ball turned over. Joel Milliman able to get a steal there. So he gives it back to the left, but it's knocked loose. And scooped up by the Wildcats. So Midland turns it right back over. Pass back to midfield. In the middle, battle for control of it. Get a whistle, and we're going to have a foul here. And Midland gets control of the ball. Here comes Madeline Edwards. 
Edwards has it knocked away from behind. And a good defense and a turnover caused by Culver Stockton. Spinning around with it is Riley Boyce. Boyce will get it off to the left side now. She finds Emily Green. Green plays it back over on the left edge now. Here's Bella Olson. Olson gives it off to Carson Jackson. Culver Stockton will now will get all players positioned where they want around the fan to get things going on offense. Most played over the right edge. This is Corals. Corals. Works on over to her right. Being contested by Bowers. Now Melvin on her. Here's a pass inside. Turnaround shot. It goes wide from Carson Jackson. It'll be scooped up by the Wildcats, though, and kept in play. Now off to the left side with it is Aliyah Ortiz. Jackson gets checked. Lost the ball. Picked up by Culver Stockton. Now we get a whistle, and now we have the illegal checking foul here on Midland. And after the foul, it was Carson Jackson. She's down on all fours here mm -hmm. and uh, being attended to. So we're going to have Jackson taking a look at here. So in the meantime, let's take a quick break. We've got 627 to go in the second. Culver Stockton leads Midland 3-1 to one on MidlandAthletics.com and BSDN Live. If you're looking for a new career, Dollar General is looking for you. Hiring all positions and all shifts, they are looking for you with a starting pay up to $22 an hour with a $2,000 sign-on bonus. You can find details by going to dollargeneral.com slash careers or by texting DG Warehouse to 25,000. Must be 18 or older, but again, starting pay up to $22 an hour with a $2,000 sign-on bonus. Contact them now, dollargeneral.com slash careers. Nebraska, where hardworking hands build incredible things. We built this thing from the ground up out of nothing. Gave it everything, now look at what it's given back. We know you put your heart into your business, because that's what Nebraskans do. As a local bank, we put our hearts into helping you. Because we're not just a bank in Nebraska, we're Nebraska in a bank. Pinnacle Bank, the way banking should be. Limitless. When you believe, there's no limit to what you can achieve. You come to Midland for an education, but you will leave with so much more. We're a small campus with big opportunities. And whatever you need, we'll help you succeed. At Midland, it's your future, your way, with our support every day. Midland University. It's bold. It's an experience. It's family. It's limitless. Launch into this school year with high-speed internet and great offers from Great Plains Communications. Fuel their learning with high speeds up to 1 gig, streaming video, and don't forget to add GPC managed Wi-Fi for a seamless learning experience throughout your entire home. Contact us today to learn more and ask about our great back to school offers in your area, including free installation on any new service. Keep your kids connected, curious, and creative this school year with fast, reliable services from Great Plains Communications as you fuel their learning and your savings. Back at Heaton Field in Fremont, along with Austin McNorton. Rich Ray with you with 6.27 left to go here in the second quarter. Culver Stockton's leading Midland by a score of 3-1. to one. Players shaking up in the play for Culver Stockton is Carson Jackson, and she's going to come off the field here, hopefully for just a little bit. Uh, I believe when she was uh, checked in the play, she took a stick errantly right across the bridge of the nose, it looked like. so. And if anybody's ever played sports, whether it be football, basketball, lacrosse, whatever it might be, you know, when you uh, get that contact right across the bridge of the nose, the eyes water up immediately, yeah, and, you, oh yeah. and, you can't, and you can't see anything. So so uh, she took some time to try to gather herself, and they checked on her, and she's going to get a swig of water on the far side and try to uh, shake the cobwebs off, and hopefully we'll be able to get back in there for the Wildcats. Uh, so we have 627 remaining here in the second. It is a 3-1 to one Culver Stockton lead. Midland scored the first goal of the contest, but the uh, Wildcats scored two more in the first and have scored one goal here in the second to take a 3-1 to one lead. And as we resume play, the Wildcats have it off the left side, and it'll be Kaylin Quarles who has it. Quarles has it back behind the net, and we'll give it off now to Bella Olson. Olsen looking for a teammate. Tries to get it to Corals, but threw it behind her. That ball's going to roll out of bounds, and the Wildcats turn it over. So an errant pass, and Midland will get possession. And handling it for the Warriors. 
Here on the right side is Mariah Moore, who puts it in play. And now back to Christina Myers. 5.52 to go before halftime. Myers looking for somebody to clear to, and she'll work it on the right side. On the bounce, she finds Jewel Milliman. Milliman will play it back into the middle. And this is Annika Turner. Turner brings it across midfield, gives it off to the left side, finds Harrison. Harrison will slow things up now. Has made a little gig going on offense. Nice pass inside. Shot attempt and goal for Midland. And finding the net was Madeline Edwards. Edwards, well, uh, the Warriors' top goal scorer, scores for the first time today. Great passing that time from Midland. That's kind of been the problem is some of those turnovers across the middle of the field. Splitting kind of a double team, getting across the midfield line and right down into the center. Great passing all the way around. And I think the key there, Austin, is right away where you're hitting on is that uh, Midland cleared it. Yep. And after they cleared it, Chloe Harrison, she slowed down the pace. Uh, she mm -hmm. more or less walked it on over to the left side, found Edwards in front, and Edwards was able to find the back of the net. And so Midland scores, and the Warriors cut it to one. Now it's three to two with 531 left to go here. In the You're exactly quarter. right, Rich. She just didn't want to rush it. She said, I'm going to take my time, make sure I get a good pass to a teammate right in front. Sometimes going slow is all right. Absolutely. So, tortoise and hare. You remember that story? Oh, yeah. I think that's – you got to read it. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Next draw control. And on the battle for it, it'll be easy. grabbed by Caitlin Quarles. So, Culver Stockton has it. And here's Jackson, who's back on the field after shaking up a moment ago. Jackson will circle back to her left, and now we'll give it off to Lauren Grieving. The one disadvantage, unfortunately, for Jackson is that she's five foot one, and when she turns from right to left, she's going to run right into a stick uh -huh. with somebody that's five five or taller. Here's yeah. a shot attempt and goal for Culver Stockton. Wow! From out by the top of the uh, the fan, and that was Corals. Kaylin Corals went left hand side. The freshman from Henderson, Nevada, scores for the Wildcats, and Culver Stockton gets that goal. The Midland scored right back. It's now four to two. So a two-goal Culver Stockton lead with 5.05 left to go before halftime. It looks statistically, these two teams, they're pretty equivalent coming into mm -hmm. the contest today as Culver Stockton averages just under eight goals a game. Midland averages just over seven. And the both teams average right around 17 and 18 shots a game. So, you know, if it goes how the stats look like, it looks like it is a very equivalent type of contest. As far as the history is concerned, last time these two teams played was back in 2022 in Canton, Missouri, and Culver Stockton won a dominating contest at that time, 17-4. to Draw control, handled by the Wildcats. And this is Grieving. Grieving works right into the middle of the fan here, turns around, spins, tried to get a shot off as she lost her balance, and the ball goes over by the far right sideline and picked up by Culver Stockton. On the move with it is Aliyah Ortiz. Now plays it over on the right wing. This is Quarles. Got to keep an eye on her. She's the top goal scorer this season for the Wildcats. She's found the net a couple times today. She hollers out instructions as she's being contested by Chloe Harrison. Works around to the right side. Peterson picks her up. Pass into the middle. Stolen. Harrison on the steal. And Harrison's on the move. She will quickly get across midfield, and the Warriors try to get a transition break going here. Harrison works her way to the right side, now into the middle, and she will stop. Yes. We've got a hold that was called here against Culver Stockton. And from what we've been told, it's Katie DeCrane that gets caught with the holding uh, call, so it'll be a free position shot from Chloe Harrison. Top of the fan, works her way in, shot attempt, and she scores. Chloe Harrison scores the free position shot for Midland, and the Warriors are back within one. It's now 4-3 four to three with 4.02 left to go before halftime. Boy, she just took over that whole entire time. She brought it all the way down the field after the great defensive play, capitalizes on the penalty. She's a special player. You can see why. For a tall player, she... When you watch her run up and down the field, she's one of the more athletic players oh, absolutely. up and down the field. Six-foot junior from Claremont, Florida. And she took that uh, – she stole it, worked all the way down the field, and there was a holding call, and then she scores in the free position shot. You had a feeling that uh, when she had the free position shot, it was going to be her taking it, and she wasn't going to give it up mm -hmm. to anybody else. And that's exactly yeah, she didn't even look – she didn't even look to a teammate. Yep. 4-3, Colfer Stockton leads it. 4-0-2 to go before the half. A glimmer of sunshine is starting to shine from the south. Love it. 
And the draw control will be handled by the Wildcats. Bella Olsen has it. Olsen will give it up now to Lauren Grieving. Grieving is being contested and passes to the right side. It'll bounce on over to the right wing. Ortiz will give it up. Now to Quarles. Kaylin Quarles, far right side. Passes back on up on the perimeter. Here's Jackson with it now. Jackson starts to maneuver her way in. She is checked by Shea Peterson. Passes inside. Shot attempt. Knocked down by Myers. Myers gets the save. Myers able to deny Lauren Grieving's attempt. Then on the clear attempt, it goes out of bounds. So Midland can't get it up the field, and Culver Stockton gets the ball back. 3.08 left to go before halftime. The Wildcats lead it 4-3. to three. Here's Boyce. Riley Boyce on the right side. Plays it back now, finds Quarles. Quarles working against Harrison. That comes to her left, circles her way in, shot attempt. And it's going to be a goal. It's oh, wow. right, in the, right in the corner of the net, put in by Kaylin Quarles. Reaching to her left there was Christina Myers, and we got blocked by it a little bit, but I think it maybe got a piece of her stick and then bounced inside the post. So Corals scores again here for Culver Stockton, and the Wildcats now have a two-goal lead. It's 5-3 to three with 2.40 remaining here in the second quarter. Seems like anytime time Midland has a little bit of momentum, the Wildcats just pull it right back. I mean, that was a... Really impressive shot. Still don't really know how it got through there. Mm -hmm. and I think Myers was wondering the same thing, saying, wait a minute, how did that go in? So many different <laughs> ways that you can, you know, uh, coach things, uh, X's and O's and strategies and stuff like that. Sometimes the easiest is just see the goal, shoot at it. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, sometimes that's just the easiest. And let the wild thing kind of happen. Yep. Grieving to take the draw control, and she will go up against Chloe Harrison. And the Wildcats win it. Corals has it. Seems like the Wildcats have won pretty much every one of those. Yeah, they've done a nice job getting things going here early. Ball's knocked away by Annika Turner. Picked back up by the Wildcats. Swatted out again. And now Bella Olsen's got it for Culver Stockton. She'll play it up to the point to Quarles. Quarles over on the right side. 2.14 left to go before halftime. Pass in front. Shot attempt and another goal for Culver Stockton. As Grieving able to find the back of the net assisted by Quarles. Grieving was able to get open inside, and now the Wildcats seem to uh, have found a formula to uh -huh. uh, find open players inside that fan and get good looks at the back of the net. And now Culver Stockton has its largest lead of the day. A three-goal cushion, 6-3 to three the score, with 2.08 left to go before the half. I don't know if backdoor cut is the accurate term like you see in basketball, but that's, boy, that seems like... Culver Stockton does such a great job of those cuts right across the center of the fan. And, boy, some good passing, too. That's been the key, too, is each one of those really strong cuts has been followed by a really good pass. Yep, very similar. Um, uh, so, uh, there are a lot of the, the same similarities, I guess I should say, would be a go into that. So Lauren Grieving assisted by Kalen Quarles. And it's now 6-3, the Wildcats with the lead. With 2.08 left to go before halftime. And this draw control handled by Midland as Milliman's got it. Jewel Milliman will work over on the right wing for Midland. Passes in front and it got knocked loose. There's a push, but they will play on here. And now Midland will control it over the left side. Worked in the middle. Harrison reaches back to handle it now. Chloe Harrison will get things set up right of the point. Harrison works her way inside. Has it knocked away with some contact. Battle for control of the ball. And it is still loose. And finally handled by Jewel Milliman. Milliman will give it off down. Quick credit to Harrison there. She did not give up on that loose ball. She kept fighting against four different Wildcats. Here's Maruzic. Maruzic. Had it knocked loose. And the Warriors turn it over. So Wildcats come up with it here with a minute 15 left to go in the half. Pass to the near side. This will be Green. Emily Green looks to give it back. And we'll find Ortiz. 
Ortiz. We'll start it from the left. Now we'll play it up to Olsen. Right side to Grieving. Grieving will give it off. This is Green. Plays it right side. Shot attempt. And it is in for another goal as that one's going to be put in. And uh, finding the end at this time for Culver Stockton was Emily Green. But it's just like when the sun came out to warm up the field, the Wildcats offense just became that much hotter. My goodness. They're executing so well when they get in those set plays. Like I said, Emily Green, a big part in Kalen Quarles uh, scoring there for Culver Stockton. You can probably just guess that from now on, and it'll probably be accurate, Rich. Yeah. <laughs> She's been so good. Mm -hmm. Kaylin Quarles was assisted by Emily Green on the play, so my apologies. And this goal comes with 40 seconds left to go in the half. And Culver Stockton's opened up a four-goal lead now. It is to 7-3. And the Warriors want to desperately get this to halftime and discuss things and get ready for the second-half action. So it'll be grieving on the draw control against Chloe Harrison. And the draw will be knocked around and controlled by the Wildcats. This is Corals. Bounces it up the field, and she will find Bella Olsen. Now on over the left side to Emily Green. Green gives it off. This is Olsen. Pass inside. Shot this time knocked down by Myers. Myers denying Corals the back of the net this time. On her pass, she will find Madeline Edwards. Edwards has four Wildcats chasing her, and she'll give it back to Myers. First half winding down as the ball will bounce past midfield, and that's going to bring us to halftime. So we're at the half at Heatham Field in Fremont in this KCAC women's lacrosse battle. The visitors from Canton, Missouri, the Culver Stockton Wildcats, are leading the Midland Warriors by the score of 7-3. to three. We'll take a break, we'll come back, and we'll check some statistics, and we'll get you caught up in what else is going on with Midland Athletics at this point of the season as well when we return. 7-3, to three, Culver Stockton leads it at the break on MidlandAthletics.com and BSDN Live. If you're looking for a new career, Dollar General is looking for you. Hiring all positions and all shifts, they are looking for you with a starting pay up to $22 an hour with a $2,000 sign-on bonus. You can find details by going to dollargeneral.com slash careers or by texting DG Warehouse to 25,000. Must be 18 or older, but again, starting pay up to $22 an hour with a $2,000 sign-on bonus. Contact them now, dollargeneral.com slash careers. Nebraska, where hardworking hands build incredible things. Built this thing from the ground up out of nothing. Gave it everything, now look at what it's given back. We know you put your heart into your business, because that's what Nebraskans do. As a local bank, we put our hearts into helping you. Because we're not just a bank in Nebraska, we're Nebraska in a bank. Pinnacle Bank, the way banking should be. Limitless. When you believe, there's no limit to what you can achieve. You come to Midland for an education, but you will leave with so much more. We're a small campus with big opportunities. And whatever you need, we'll help you succeed. At Midland, it's your future, your way, with our support every day. Midland University. It's bold. It's an experience. It's family. It's limitless. Launch into this school year with high-speed internet and great offers from Great Plains Communications. Fuel their learning with high speeds up to 1 gig, streaming video, and don't forget to add GPC managed Wi-Fi for a seamless learning experience throughout your entire home. Contact us today to learn more and ask about our great back to school offers in your area, including free installation on any new service. Keep your kids connected, curious, and creative this school year with fast, reliable services from Great Plains Communications as you fuel their learning and your savings. We welcome you back to Heatham Field in Fremont alongside Austin McNaughton. I'm Rich Ray. We're at halftime of our KCAC women's lacrosse matchup between the Midland Warriors and the Culver Stockton Wildcats. And Culver Stockton has the lead here at their break by the score of 7-3. to three. Score in summary, Midland scored first, 13-27 to go in the first quarter. Chloe Harrison assisted by Madigan Maruzic to make it 1-0. But then uh, the uh, Wildcats were able to score the next three goals. Kaylin Corral scored unassisted at 7-0-4 to go in the quarter. And then Lauren Grieving was able to find the net 
assisted by Kaylin Quarles to make it 2-1, and that would be the score at the end of the first quarter of play. Then Aliyah Ortiz scores for the Wildcats early in the second at 10-33 off a Carson Jackson assist to make it 3-1. Midland got back on the board with 5-31 to go before the half. Madeline Edwards scoring off a Chloe Harrison assist to make it 3-2, but the Wildcats come right back and score 26 seconds later. Kaylin Quarles scores unassisted to make it a 4-2 lead. Midland uh, cut it to 1 when uh, Chloe Harrison scored on a free position shot with 4.02 to go in the half to make it 4-3, to three. but then the Wildcats have scored the next three goals uh, before the half. Kalen Quarles scores unassisted at 2.40. Lauren Graving scored off a Kalen Quarles assist at 2.08, and then Quarles scores again 40 seconds to go before the half off an Emily Green assist. A total of six penalties were called in the first half, and four of those were on Midland, two of which on Culver Stockton. Look at the individual statistics. For Culver Stockton, it is Kalen Quarles who has four goals. Lauren Grieving has two. Uh, Jillian Vervonik in goal has given up three goals, and she's got two saves. For Midland, Chloe Harrison has scored twice. And Madeline Edwards has the other goal for Midland. And Christina Myers has given up seven goals, and she's also got seven saves. The Wildcats have outshot Midland 16-6 in the first half. Ground balls have been controlled by Midland 26-20. The Wildcats have uh, cleared 14 out of 17 attempts. Midland 10 of 16 on clears. Saves, Midland's got seven. Culver Stockton with two. Uh, the Wildcats have 19 turnovers to Midland's 18. The Warriors have committed nine fouls. Culver Stockton with five. Draw controls, Culver Stockton has won nine to Midland's three and free position shots. The Wildcats are 0 for 2, and Midland is 1 for 1. So I have to look at the first half statistics. Again, after this contest, Midland will await uh, action and the KCAC uh, Conference Tournament when they will be playing August or uh, April the 18th in St. Louis. And most likely it will be against the top seed Missouri Baptist. Uh, for the Culver Stockton Wildcats after today, they're in action Wednesday afternoon at 4 o'clock in Davenport when they take on St. Ambrose and the Bees. Midland baseball team is in action today at 17th ranked Concordia in Seward, and that contest is just about wrapping up the first game today. They're in the top of the seventh, and Concordia is leading that one by a score of uh, 10 to 2. No, yeah, 10 to 2 is the score in the top of the seventh in that one. Our next broadcast of Midland Athletics will be tomorrow when the Midland 13th uh, ranked softball team is at home at Chaplin Field at the Shilke Complex, taking on the Morningside Mustangs. Doubleheader starts at 5 o'clock tomorrow. Both games right here on MidlandAthletics.com and BSDN Live. We're at halftime at Heatham Field in Fremont, where Culver Stockton leads Midland 7 to 3. Our second half action is coming up at, in about five minutes, and we'll be joining you for that in just a bit on MidlandAthletics.com and BSDN Live. If you're looking for a new career, Dollar General is looking for you. Hiring all positions and all shifts, they are looking for you with a starting pay up to $22 an hour with a $2,000 sign-on bonus. You can find details by going to dollargeneral.com slash careers or by texting DG Warehouse to 25000 Must be 18 or older, but again, starting pay up to $22 an hour with a $2,000 sign-on bonus. Contact them now, dollargeneral.com slash careers. Nebraska, where hardworking hands build incredible things. Built this thing from the ground up out of nothing. Gave it everything, now look at what it's given back. We know you put your heart into your business because that's what Nebraskans do. As a local bank, we put our hearts into helping you. Because we're not just a bank in Nebraska, we're Nebraska in a bank. Pinnacle Bank, the way banking should be. Limitless. When you believe, there's no limit to what you can achieve. You come to Midland for an education, but you will leave with so much more. We're a small campus with big opportunities, and whatever you need, we'll help you succeed. At Midland, it's your future, your way, with our support every day. Midland University. It's bold. It's an experience. It's family. It's limitless. Launch into this school year with high-speed internet and great offers from Great Plains Communications. Fuel their learning with high speeds up to 1 gig, streaming video, and don't forget to add GPC-managed Wi-Fi for a seamless learning experience throughout your entire home. Contact us today to learn more and ask about our great back-to-school offers in your area, including free installation on any new service. Keep your kids connected, curious, and creative this school year with fast, reliable services from Great Plains Communications as you fuel their learning and your savings. If you're looking for a new career, Dollar General is looking for you. Hiring all positions and all shifts, they are looking for you with a starting pay up to $22 an hour with a $2,000 sign-on bonus. 
You can find details by going to dollargeneral.com slash careers or by texting DG Warehouse to 25000. Must be 18 or older, but again, starting pay up to $22 an hour with a $2,000 sign-on bonus. Contact them now, dollargeneral.com slash careers. Nebraska, where hardworking hands build incredible things. Built this thing from the ground up out of nothing. Gave it everything, now look at what it's given back. We know you put your heart into your business because that's what Nebraskans do. As a local bank, we put our hearts into helping you because we're not just a bank in Nebraska, we're Nebraska in a bank. Pinnacle Bank, the way banking should be. Limitless. When you believe there's no limit to what you can achieve, you come to Midland for an education, but you will leave with so much more. We're a small campus with big opportunities, and whatever you need, we'll help you succeed. At Midland, it's your future, your way, with our support every day. Midland University. It's bold. It's an experience. It's family. It's limitless. Launch into this school year with high-speed internet and great offers from Great Plains Communications. Fuel their learning with high speeds up to 1 gig, streaming video. And don't forget to add GPC-managed Wi-Fi for a seamless learning experience throughout your entire home. Contact us today to learn more and ask about our great back-to-school offers in your area, including free installation on any new service. Keep your kids connected, curious, and creative this school year with fast, reliable services from Great Plains Communications as you fuel their learning and your savings. If you're looking for a new career, Dollar General is looking for you. Hiring all positions and all shifts, they are looking for you with a starting pay up to $22 an hour with a $2,000 sign-on bonus. You can find details by going to dollargeneral.com slash careers or by texting DG Warehouse to 25000. Must be 18 or older, but again, starting pay up to $22 an hour with a $2,000 sign-on bonus. Contact them now, dollargeneral.com slash careers. Nebraska where hard-working hands build incredible things. Built this thing from the ground up out of nothing Gave it everything, now look at what it's given back We know you put your heart into your business because that's what Nebraskans do. As a local bank, we put our hearts into helping you because we're not just a bank in Nebraska, we're Nebraska in a bank. Pinnacle Bank, the way banking should be. Welcome back to Heaton Field with Austin McNorton. I'm Rich Ray. We're ready to begin the third quarter of uh, this uh, women's lacrosse matchup between the Midland Warriors and the Culver Stockton Wildcats. Culver Stockton leads it by a score of 7-3 as Kaylin Quarles has scored four goals to uh, pace the Wildcats in this one. And on this battle for draw control, it will be handled by the Wildcats. Is taking it as Quarles. Uh, the ball is not well. they call a... Draw control violation is what occurred there, so it okay. will it will be a uh, Culver Stockton ball. And handling it will be Lauren Grieving. Midland will be against the wind here in the third quarter. They'll have the wind with them in the fourth. I honestly don't know what's the advantage with that. I think you better off against the wind, to be honest. I think um, I would not want to be running my offense down the field into the wind. That's and, true. You know, that, that's sucking all that air right down your lungs at this point. I feel like the passes have helped, though. With the wind at the back, it seems like the passes always seem to sail. Here's Rose. Or Olsen, I beg your pardon. Olsen's pass knocked down by Bowers, but picked back up by Jackson. Back to the left side. Grieving shot attempt. Knocked away by Myers. But scoop back up on the right side by Quarles. The Quarles will get organized back behind the net. Now she tries to maneuver in, but will retreat. And plays it on over to the far side. This is Grieving. Back to Quarles. Quarles walks her way backward on the left wing. Now we'll give a little bit of direction. Annika Turner defending her. Ball played left side. Jackson has it. Had it knocked away. Battle for the control. And my ends up in Myers' net. So she's got it. 13-28 to go in the third. It's still 7-3. Culver Stockton with the lead, and Midland will have its first possession here of the second half. Ball's played over to the right side. This is Chloe Harrison. Harrison across midfield now. We'll bounce it over to Cadence Rose. 
Rose trying to scoop it up. Now handles it. Rose will play it on over the far right side. Battle for knock loose, and it goes out of bounds. So Warriors turn it over. Got a couple players on the squad for Midland that are from the state of Montana. Cadence Rose and Ryland Nelson. Cadence is from Kalispell, and Ryland is from Billings. You ever been to you ever been that part of the country? I haven't. My dad said it's his favorite place oh, on earth, though. Oh, gorgeous. Yeah, absolutely beautiful. I've Fla seen Yellowstone. Does that count? Uh, uh, <laughs> that that T V show. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite to that vicinity, but I tell you what, you know, you talk about that part of the country, you're talking about Flathead Lake, the going to the Sun Road and yeah. uh, up in Glacier National Park. That's yeah, that's a put it on your bucket list. That's okay. a beautiful place to be. Ball's loose here. Rolls around, and we pick back up by Green. Green will give it off now to Corals. Just about three minutes gone here in the second half. Culver Stockton leads Midland 7 to 3. Corals around a screen from Jackson. Yep. There it is. There's your illegal. There, there it is. There's your, there's your illegal screen right there. We talked about it in the first period. Yep. And uh, UConn basketball fans are arguing that call right now. <laughs> They're going to pull that one up on Twitter as evidence. Madeline Edwards over to the far left side now. Edwards will pass into the middle. And Rose has it. Rose shot attempt goes wide. Edwards will go scoop it up or attempt to. Now she's got it. So Edwards will get things organized. Edwards passes into the middle, into uh, Marusic. Marusic scores. That is Madigan Marusic, the freshman from Benton, Arkansas, who was able to reach back and catch that and turn around quickly and released and was able to uh, beat Vervnik for the goal. And Midland is on the board first here in the third quarter. It's now 7-4. to four. Well, that was an incredible catch across the middle because it looked like it was a little high and behind her, but she was able to get her stick up there. And then be able to get it right back down. She didn't mess around with it when she had it. She was looking right to the back of the net and put it there. That was really impressive. So Maddock and Maruzic scored, assisted by Madeline Edwards. 11-19 left to go here in the third. And it's now 7-4 to four in favor of Culver Stockton. And we'll get ready for the draw control. Now, you know, it's interesting how Culver Stockton does the draw control. And, and it is usually Lauren Grieving, and she will stand right next to her opposing player. Others will be on the other side of the of the midfield stripe. But, you know, not going to argue. Culver Stockton has won most of the draw controls today. But right. Midland takes this one. And handling it is Chloe Harrison. Harrison's got it on the right wing. We'll find Jewel Milliman. Now we'll give it to Turner. A little trouble on it. Turner will pick it back up. Now Turner works her way in. And retreats a couple steps. Being contested strongly. You get a hard check there. And now she gives it off. Milliman has it. Works it to the left side of the fan. As Merzik will give it to Marshall. Alexis Marshall will play it over to the left side. Here is Harrison. Chloe Harrison looking inside. Continues to shuffle to her right. And now we'll play it on over to Milliman. Milliman on the left wing. Gives it up now. This is Turner. Monica Turner works her way in. Spins back to her right. And retreats. Can't get any space and get a shot off here. Finds Milliman. Now we'll swing it on over to the right side. Here's Maruzic. Maruzic will pass it. And it's knocked down and taken away. Good defense by the Wildcats. Coming up with it now is Brooke Donnelly. Donnelly will play it to Lopez. Lopez to the near sideline. And Harrison checking her. Lopez lost the ball out of bounds. And they're going to signal that it is going to be Culver Stockton ball, as the official said that it was a illegal check here on Chloe Harrison. And uh, with that, I believe Harrison has to, is going to come off here. Yeah, Harrison had a couple of words with the official, it looks like, too. I don't think she liked that call at all. It is a green card that is handed out here, so it will be Harrison off for a minute. 9.48 left to go in the third. Culver Stockton leads it 7-4. And the Wildcats, Quarles, will pass, but it gets behind one of her teammates. Will be picked back up by Midland. Here's Shea Peterson spinning her way forward, but she has it knocked loose. And it got booted by Boyd. And now Culver Stockton has the possession. Wildcats have it up near the point. This will be Jackson. 
Jackson will start the offense now for Culver Stockton. And she works her way to the right. Now into the middle. Got knocked down. And I think we're going to have a foul, maybe a free position shot coming up here. Let's see who the guilty party is. Shea Peterson, maybe? I think it is on Shea. So Carson Jackson is going to get a free position shot. Chance for Culver Stockton to get that goal back they gave up a moment ago. Jackson will work back to her right. Now will shoots, uh, shoots it high. Picked up by one of the Wildcats behind the net. Over on the left side. It is knocked away. And now flip to the left. This is Olsen. Olsen will pass inside. Myers will try to chase it down and does. She picks it up, then has it swatted away by Quarles. And Myers has got to hustle to get back inside uh, her crease. And now Quarles has it for the Wildcats. She'll play it to Grieving. Those two are the... Oh, we got a whistle, and we're going to have an offside call here. And I think we got, it was an illegal screen that was uh, set by Another Carson one. Jackson. Yeah. So Midland has the ball. 8.36 left to go in the third. Down 7-4. to four. Uh, The clear attempt. It's knocked down shy of midfield by the Wildcats. Now that's where the win becomes unfortunate. That's Throwing right. into it like that is really tough. Milliman able to pick it up. She gets knocked down. The ball is loose. Wow. The official lets him play on. And waiting for the ball to get scooped up by someone. And finally it'll be handled by Ryland Nelson. but got knocked away. And now the official is going to stop things, and he's going to say Culver Stockton possession. You'll see officials do that after a while in a mad scramble like that where nobody really gets control. After a while, the official will uh, determine who he feels um, has the right of advantage toward the ball, and he did so there. And as handling it is the Wildcats, and this is Grieving. Grieving, being defended by Turner, knocked her straight down. So a foul on Annika Turner. No card, though, that time. I think it is because the check was against the body and not up near the face. Okay. And it was just a hard check. But if it gets up near the face, then, yeah, then you're coming off. They're going to – and uh, with this, they're making uh, Turner play back behind. Here comes Grieving in the middle. She's so got it knocked loose, and it rolls right to Myers. So Midland fortunate to get the ball back there. Mm-hmm. Just about midway through the third quarter, it is a 7-4 to four Culver Stockton lead. Ball played to midfield, and Harrison has it. Harrison maneuvers through the Wildcat defense. She's on the move. Harrison, well, we've got a whistle here. And we get a stoppage. You can kind of even hear the Midland crowd all here like, oh, Harrison with that much momentum. I don't even think she wanted to be stopped. Foul and Culver Stockton. <laughs> so free position shot here for Harrison. Harrison shot attempt bounces and goes wide. It will be Midland ball, though, as Marshall's the closest to it. So Marshall will pick up one of the balls that it's right off outside the sideline. Into Harrison. Harrison working to her right. Shot attempt and goes just wide. And it will be awarded to Midland as closest to it was Ryland Nelson. I beg your pardon, Madigan Maruzic. Maruzic gives it off to Edwards. Edwards will pass it, looking for Milliman, and it got deflected away and taken away. Wildcats, good, de good defense there. Culver Stockton plays it up to Jackson. Jackson on the move, right side. Jackson stops, had it knocked out off her stick and taken away by Annika Turner. Turner has it now for Midland. Both teams starting to get a little bit more physical now. Yes, I was just thinking the same thing. Ball played to the near side, and it is going to be a clear attempt that gets a little bit high, and will be taken away as that pass from Caitlin Bowers just got away from her. Now at midfield, it will be scooped up by Harrison. Harrison has it for Midland. Harrison will get it up the field to the right side. And here is Maruzic. Her shot attempt bounces and just goes wide. Picked up by Edwards. Edwards will pass it off, finding Marshall. Marshall works her way in. Her shot attempt is in for a goal. Alexis Marshall scores for Midland. So Alexis Marshall caught that, and she wanted to go right but couldn't get the shot off, so she quickly came back to her left but still shot it from the right side of her body. And Alexis Marshall finds the back in the net. The sophomore from Kingwood, Texas, gets the Warriors a little bit closer. It's now 7-5. to five. It's a good job by Midland to stay with it after the first shot attempt missed. They took it back around, reset, good passing. And, yeah, even though she, you, you called it, Rich, she didn't have the first initial shot, so she said, I'm not going to panic. I'm going to stay patient. Defenders all around. 
put a perfect ball right in the net. So Alexis Marshall scores for the Warriors. 7-5 now the score. And I think strategy-wise, if you're head coach Macy J right now, you got to be thinking to yourself, okay, we've been able to get out and run a little bit, even into the wind. Mm -hmm. And if you can kind of wear down this uh, Culver Stockton team, which, by the way, does not have any substitutes at all whatsoever. They do not have a bench today. Uh, that if uh, you make them kind of wear down a little bit, by the time you get in the fourth quarter, there's your chance to maybe potentially make a comeback. Yep, absolutely right. But we'll see if that strategy is what is used and unfolds as Culver Stockton has the ball. 5.44 to go in the third. Wildcats lead 7-5. Here's Lopez. Lopez sprinting to the right side. Got a clean screen to her right. Now has it into the attacking zone. And she'll give it off to Jackson. Jackson is being contested by Ashley Boyd. Those two players have the protective headgear on here today. Jackson, she keeps maneuvering around here. She's looking for an offensive teammate. Lost the ball, and Boyd will battle for it, and it is still loose. It ricochets around, and we picked up. Oh, we've got a foul here on Culver Stockton, so it will be Midland ball. So the Warriors have it. Five minutes to go in the third. Midland trails 7-5. Ball played to the left side and now back to Christina Myers in goal. Myers with the clear attempt left side looking for Harrison. And it bounces right to her and she's got it on the hop. Harrison working to her left and had it knocked off of her stick. And now the ball is on the ground and uh, we're going to have a foul on Harrison, a push. Uh, she knocked over one of the Wildcats in the battle for that uh, ground ball. Yeah, you could tell she just kind of got frustrated that she wasn't able to handle that cleanly and, and Keep that transition offense going. It's Katie DeCrane who's got it now. And the Wildcats will get it back to the goalkeeper, Jillian Vervonik. Vervonik's clear attempt goes wide and out of bounds, so Midland will get it back. 4-13 left to go here in the third quarter. Culver Stockton leads 7-5. Midland has scored twice here in this third quarter, and Culver Stockton has not found the back of the net yet. Ball is bounced up the field, handled by Cadence Rose. She'll play it to the right side. Now, long pass. It was intended to the left. It goes wide of the net. And let's see who will have control of this. The officials say Culver Stockton. Yep, that was good hustle by Culver Stockton mm -hmm. to get back to the ball. It was the first one to get there was Brooke Donnelly. So Donnelly will play it over to the left side now. She finds Lopez. Naya Lopez had it knocked away. It's loose on the ground. And then scooped back up by Brooke Donnelly. Donnelly plays it up the field a little too high. And as it rolls, it'll be taken away by the Warriors. Midland's got it. Got knocked away. But Cadence Rose is right there for Midland. Rose will give it back to Caitlin Bowers. Bowers bounces it up the field. And Marshall, who scored a moment ago, scoops it up. Alexis Marshall will pass into the middle and a shot attempt and goal by Madeline Edwards. Boy, that was a quick pass and release. Marshall finding Edwards, who quickly was able to find the back in the net. And just like that, Midland's right back in this. They trail 7-6. to six. Ah, I think Ver, what's their goalie, Ver, yeah, Vervasic, she didn't expect it to be that quick, Rich. When she got it, she's like, all right, let me see where this is going to end up going. Next thing you know, it's right behind her. Edwards caught it up high, turned, and quickly shot. So now it is seven to six. What a period this has been for the Warriors. Yeah, Midland trailed at the half seven to three, and so they have outscored the Wildcats three to nothing here in this third quarter. And we'll get ready for another draw control here with three oh three left to go in the third. And Chloe Harrison will take the draw and control for Midland. I believe it's grieving for Culver Stockton. Yep, it is. This is more of the traditional style of the draw and control here, one on each side of the line. And we've got a uh, violation, so it will be Culver Stockton ball. So the Wildcats will have it. Usually on those violations, this is in a case to where just, just like in a hockey uh, face-off, but this is not a face-off, it's a draw control, that you know somebody gets too much of an advantage before mm -hmm. the whistle's blown. All right, this is Jackson. Or, I beg your pardon, it is um, 
Grieving. Grieving's got it on the left side. Grieving over on the left wing. Retreats. Plays it into Quarles. Quarles shot attempt. Bounces in. Goal for Kaylin Quarles. Her fifth goal today. And Culver Stockton is on the board here in the second half. Kaylin Quarles, when she came across and caught that, and you had to be thinking to yourself, that's an, a great opportunity for a goal. As she has got a knack for finding the back of the net and was able to put the one on the bounce, and Myers just couldn't not quite get to it in time. So with 2.27 left to go in the third, it's now 8-6 to six in favor of Culver Stockton. Yeah, by far the best look that the Wildcats have had here in this second half and did not miss that opportunity off of a good pass again. So now eight to six. Again, we're baseball team in action today in Seward. And the 17th ranked Concordia Bull Bulldogs took the first one today, 10 to two. The second game is just now getting underway in Seward. All right, here is Lopez with the ball. Lopez along the right side, and, yep, she got checked, and she stepped out of bounds. So that was mm. good defense by Ashley Boyd. Boyd able to force. You were talking earlier before we went on the air the difference between the men's and the women's game. The women's game, they will kind of, like, escort you toward the sideline defensively, and uh, you don't get too much of a push. The men's game... It's like Greco-Roman wrestling. They will try to push you out of bounds. <laughs> Their official just lost his hat, and it's going to end up somewhere by Nickerson by the time he picks it My up. My goodness. Yep. Uh, the Warriors have it. Here's Chloe Harrison. Harrison will work on over the right side. Minute 39 to go in the third. Culver Stockton up 8-6. to six. Played back to the left side. Matic and Maruzic. Switch the spots. Another official lost his hat. We're down two hats in the official category. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck getting them back. That's the real thing. Here's a, here's a uh, pass to the right side. Madeline Edwards has got it. Edwards will play in the middle. Marshall tried to get a shot attempt off, but couldn't keep it on her stick. And now it's picked up, and it is Jewel Milliman who has it. Milliman will play it to the right side. Edwards back behind the net here. Edwards will shift to her right, checks the possession clock. 24 seconds left on that. Harrison's got it. Harrison up near the point now. Works her way in aggressively, shot attempt, and it just goes wide, but it'll be a Midland who has the possession. Three Warriors were back behind the net. But the Warriors got to work quickly here. 12 seconds left to go on the possession clock. Now Edwards has got it. Edwards has got to get a shot off here. She will work her way around, spins, down to two seconds, had it knocked loose, a so whistle, and was there illegal contact to the head there just before she got a shot attempt off? The official was... Pointing. So I think you're going to put one second back on the shot clock here. Foul, Foul was on Culver Stockton's Eight. Katie Crane. Midland will get a shot attempt Eight. off. It goes wide. He goes out of bounds. Who's possession? Warriors. Midland has it. So Midland gets it, and they get 60 seconds here on this uh, possession. Here's Harrison. Harrison works her way in, got knocked down inside, and that's going to draw a foul and should be a free position shot as well, I believe. So Harrison will hop back up to her feet. She lost her goggles in the process as well, and she's trying to shake off the sting of that contact. Chloe does wear a uh, brace on that left knee as well, so that's going to be a concern. Boy, it's impressive to watch her, though. When she puts her head down, she's pretty hard to stop. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, when, she, yeah when she puts it in third gear, yep, yep, it's uh, not going in a reverse, that's for sure. All right, so Harrison, after she gets the goggles back and she gets the little black rubber pebbles from the turf wiped uh, off yep. of her forehead, and she'll have a free position shot, works her way in, gives it up. Midland will try to chase it down. Can the Warriors keep it in play? They will. It's Annika Turner who has it. Turner on the left wing. will pass in front. She was looking for Marshall, who had it knocked away. It scoots all the way out, right side, and that brings us to the end of the third quarter. So a good third quarter for Midland. The Warriors were able to put up three goals, and Culver Stockton scores one. So we'll go to the fourth quarter of this one with the visiting Culver Stockton Wildcats leading Midland by a score of 8-6. to six. 
Fourth quarter action is coming up when we return on MidlandAthletics.com and BSDN Live. If you're looking for a new career, Dollar General is looking for you. Hiring all positions and all shifts, they are looking for you with a starting pay up to $22 an hour with a $2,000 sign-on bonus. You can find details by going to dollargeneral.com slash careers or by texting DG Warehouse to 25000. Must be 18 or older, but again, starting pay up to $22 an hour with a $2,000 sign-on bonus. Contact them now, dollargeneral.com slash careers. Nebraska, where hardworking hands build incredible things. Built this thing from the ground up out of nothing. Gave it everything, now look at what it's given back. We know you put your heart into your business, because that's what Nebraskans do. As a local bank, we put our hearts into helping you. Because we're not just a bank in Nebraska, we're Nebraska in a bank. Pinnacle Bank, the way banking should be. Limitless. When you believe there's no limit to what you can achieve. You come to Midland for an education, but you will leave with so much more. We're a small campus with big opportunities. And whatever you need, we'll help you succeed. At Midland, it's your future, your way, with our support every day. Midland University. It's bold. It's an experience. It's family. It's limitless. Launch into this school year with high-speed internet and great offers from Great Plains Communications. Fuel their learning with high speeds up to 1 gig, streaming video, and don't forget to add GPC-managed Wi-Fi for a seamless learning experience throughout your entire home. Contact us today to learn more and ask about our great back-to-school offers in your area, including free installation on any new service. Keep your kids connected, curious, and creative this school year with fast, reliable services from Great Plains Communications as you fuel their learning and your savings. Welcome back to Heatham Field in Fremont alongside Austin McNorton. I'm Rich Ray, and we're about ready to begin the fourth quarter as the Culver Stockton Wildcats lead the Midland Warriors by the score of 8-6. to six. But Midland with a little momentum here. The Warriors trailed 7-3 at halftime and outscored those, uh, the Wildcats 3-1 to one in the uh, third quarter. So we go to the fourth. Midland will have the wind at its back here as they'll be going from left to right. And uh, we'll, we'll see if the Warriors come out with the same type of uh, – Offensive mindset in the fourth quarter like they had in the third where they quickly get it in the zone and then patiently uh, set up the offense. All right, draw control will be battled for by Annika Turner and Lauren Grieving. And the ball will bounce toward the zone and picked up by Culver Stockton. So the Wildcats win the opening draw to begin the quarter. Grieving will play it over to the right side of Corals. Jackson trying to control it. And it'll be scooped by Shea Peterson. Peterson picks it up on the move. And Peterson will quickly get across midfield. Peterson, right side. On her right, she will give it up to Marshall. A little bit behind her, mm. though, and it goes wide. Marshall, she was she wanted to get a shot off quickly uh -huh. is what she wanted to do there. And that pass was just a little bit behind her. She reached back for it and could not control it. So, Yep, definitely the right idea there, just not executed 100%. So the Wildcats will have the ball. Over on the right side, this is Katie DeCrane. She got knocked down by Annika Turner. That's going to be a foul. It does not draw a card here, so that's good news. So Chloe Harrison from Midland ran back into the uh, locker room briefly, and now she's back near the bench. She's kind of hobbling a little bit. Makes me wonder if that left knee might be bugging her. One of the Warriors got knocked down and lost their goggles on the far side. And that was Annika Turner. Turner's slow to get up. And she's up to her feet. So, yep, it's been a physical second half of play. Absolutely. But from the physicality standpoint, it's been legal. We haven't seen very many fouls that have been called on either I team. I felt like there was the more half. fouls in the first half. Yep. Right. So Midland in possession here. Pass to the middle. Be gathered by the Warriors. Over to the right side with it is Madeline Edwards. Edwards plays it up high. Got knocked loose. Bowers tried to scoop it up. And now one of her teammates will try to gather it. And I think we've got a offside call. offside call on Midland. The Warriors had too many players in the offensive zone there. So it's a turnover, and the Wildcats have it. 12.53 left to play. Culver Stockton leads 8-6. to six. 
This is Lopez. Lopez will work behind the screen here. Spins back to her left. Now had it knocked away. And as it's battled around, the Warriors come out of there with it. And it was good defense there by Alexis Rios. Now more battles for it and has it knocked her loose. Rios knocks it down. Scooped up by Culver Stockton. And then now we got a push out of bounds. And it's Shea Peterson. She might get a card out of this here. She it was a little high, too. She pushed Emily Green right in the back. The officials are going to – yep, it's going to be a card here. And Peterson's going to have to come off here for 30 seconds. Now i got a few uh, little raindrops on the uh, mm, window yeah. of the press box here, uh, Austin. And I did mention in the forecast, I said after 2 o'clock today, there was a 50-50 shot of rain, and so we're past that now. It's looked like it's going to rain all day, but it hasn't been. Yep. Last night we got some. Oh, yeah. Some oh, yeah. Last night. Let's think about lacrosse, though, that as long as you don't have lightning and it's not a blizzard, you can pretty much play the sport. Circling around with it for the Wildcats is Brooke Donnelly. So bounce it over to the right side. Playing it back is Katie DeCrane. Now the ball's up to midfield. Lopez trying to scoop it up. It's going by the sideline. She'll keep it in play. Now handles it. And we'll play it to Jackson. Carson Jackson has it. Jackson will swing it on over now to Grieving. And now the Wildcats get up their offense set up. Grieving will give it to Quarles. She's been pretty quiet in this second half compared to how – outstanding she was in the first two periods. I mean, she scored four goals in the first half, and she scored the lone goal for Culver Stockton here in the second. Now we've got a whistle and a turnover. Midland has it. The foul on Culver Stockton, and now up the field come the Warriors. Long pass. Oh, just a little bit too high for Madigan Maruzic, and it will be Culver Stockton ball as coming out of her goal to get near it was Vervonic. 11-10 left to go with the Wildcats leading 8-6. Pass right side is on the ground. And it comes at the right sideline, and Midland scoops it up. It's Madeline Edwards with it. Edwards will maneuver up to the point here and get the offense set up for Midland. Again, Midland slowing things down to get organized here, and let's see if it pays off. Annika Turner will give it off right side to Rios. Alexis Rios on the right wing. High pass right into the middle of the fan, and it'll be picked off. Intercepted by Culver Stockton. So, miscommunication there. Mm -hmm. Handling it is Brooke Donnelly. She'll give it back to Vervronic. Vervronic looking to clear out by midfield, and she does so perfectly. She'll get it to the right side. This is Bella Olson. Olson now gets it into the attacking zone on the right wing. Olson. Passes into the middle inside and shot attempt and goal as open inside was Corals and she found the back of the net and scores for Culver Stockton. You can tell both teams are gassed right now. Yep. They, they are running against that wind and are uh, trying to catch their breath. And Corals scores again and that'll be her sixth goal today. And now Culver Stockton's got a three goal lead, nine to six, with ten fourteen left to play. That's a big goal for the visitors. Yeah, it felt like you you said it there, Rich. It felt like Corals just had a little bit more gas in the tank as she beat the Warriors down the field right into the middle. And there were several Midland players right behind her, but just couldn't get enough speed, enough <laughs> enough in the tank to get out in front of her. When you watch uh, players that uh, are you know in this league or the teams that Midland plays predominantly, you look for the talented players, especially the young players. And you got to think about Kaylin Quarles. She's just a freshman out of Henderson, Nevada, and she leads Culver Stockton in scoring on the year. And six goals for her here this afternoon. So yeah, she's been fantastic. Nine to six, Culver Stockton leads it. Ten fourteen to play. Grieving and Annika Turner. On the draw control. As it spins out of there, it will be picked up by Jewel Milliman. Milliman passing right side. Knocked loose. Two Warriors run into each other, and then Lopez comes up with the ball. Lopez will play it on over to the near side now for Grieving. Grieving will pass to the middle, and she will find Riley Boyce. Boyce side of midfield had it knocked loose, taken away. Alexis Marshall uh, gets it on the steal and turnover. Ball's played back to the middle. Bounces around, and Edwards trying to pick it up. 
It is still loose, and Jewel Milliman has it. Milliman has it now for Midland, and she'll play it back. She'll give it off now to Cadence Rose. Rose to her left side. Now around the wing. Cadence Rose will slow things up. Let's see if she can get it to Harrison. Nope, knocked away from behind. Ball's going to ricochet high in the air, and Milliman has it on the bounce. Now she'll play it on over to Harrison. Chloe Harrison has it. And we'll give it off to Milliman. This feels like an important possession here for Midland. Yeah, Rose will get it over to the right side. Here comes Marusic. Marusic checked to her right. Now back behind the net to the right side. Try to pass in for Marshall, but it's stolen away. Lopez was able to steal it. Now has it knocked down to the ground. Ground ball battled for him. We've got a whistle, and it's going to be a foul on Midland. And now we've got another foul on Alexis Marshall. So it'll be Culver Stockton ball. Ball played up the far side and thrown away. Mariah Moore picks it up for Midland. Moore will transition quickly and will give it off to Annika Turner, who fakes left and goes right. Turner into the offensive zone now. Turner wants to pass it off, bounced it in front, and it rolls all the way to Veronica goal. She's able to pick it up. Turner was looking for Edwards but couldn't find her cleanly, and it bounced past Edwards right to Veronica goal. 8-12 to go in the ball game. It is a 9-6 lead in favor of Culver Stockton. Now the ball at the midfield. Here's Jackson. Jackson bounces it over the far right side. Getting into organize is Aaliyah Ortiz, and she'll play it back now to Kaylin Quarles. Quarles walks it up the field. Both teams just look there like they're exhausted. There you go. Yep, that's that fatigue yeah, you can when, see. When you go into the south right down this fourth quarter for both teams, it's a chore. Backing up with it. Now Jackson's got it. Jackson will play it to the right side. Finding Sebring. Or, um... Uh, Grieving. Grieving on the right wing. Now back behind the net. Moore defends her. Grieving tried to play it in the middle. Caught. Shot knocked down. And Myers picks it up for Midland. Midland defended that pretty well. Here's the clear attempt toward midfield. And Lopez steps in front of it and steals it. Midland turns it over. Lopez over on the right side. Well, Cats will get it back to Kaylin Quarles. Quarles on the right wing. She'll trot to her right. Slowly works back behind. And the Wildcats can use some clock here, too, because they're up three yep. goals. Six and a half minutes to go. They don't have to get in a hurry. Midland on defense might have to take some chances here. Yeah, they're going to use most of this possession clock, you would imagine. And Quarles will... Backpedal to her left wing. Checked by Turner. Now comes back around, tries to pass into the middle, and Jewel Milliman steps in front and steals it and flips it right back to her goalkeeper and Christina Myers. Milliman with some nifty stick work today. She's looked sharp in that category. Midland to clear up the field a little too far. Let's see if the Warriors can get to it. Trying to chase it down is Harrison, and Harrison got her stick on it and scoops it up. 5.49 to go. Harrison on the move for the Warriors. Works to her left. She's defended, circles back around. Now works her way inside the fan, puts a shot attempt on, and scores. Goodness. She just kept spinning around and finally found some space. And as soon as she found a little bit of a crease to see the net, she released it and scores. And we got a Culver Stockton player that uh, might be shaken up here. And it looks like it is Brooke Donnelly. So they're going to attend to Brooke Donnelly. 5.39 left to play. It's a 9-7 to seven Culver Stockton lead. I'll tell you what, let's take a quick 30-second break here, okay. and then we'll come back and get ready for the draw control when we return on MidlandAthletics.com and BSDN Live. Nebraska, where hardworking hands build incredible things. Built this thing from the ground up out of nothing. Gave it everything, now look. What it's given back. We know you put your heart into your business because that's what Nebraskans do. 
As a local bank, we put our hearts into helping you. Because we're not just a bank in Nebraska, we're Nebraska in a bank. Pinnacle Bank, the way banking should be. Limitless. When you believe, there's no limit to what you can achieve. You come to Midland for an education, but you will leave with so much more. We're a small campus with big opportunities. And whatever you need, we'll help you succeed. At Midland, it's your future, your way, with our support every day. Midland University. It's bold. It's an experience. It's family. It's limitless. Launch into this school year with high-speed internet and great offers from Great Plains Communications. Fuel their learning with high speeds up to 1 gig, streaming video. And don't forget to add GPC managed Wi-Fi for a seamless learning experience throughout your entire home. Contact us today to learn more and ask about our great back-to-school offers in your area, including free installation on any new service. Keep your kids connected, curious, and creative this school year with fast, reliable services from Great Plains Communications as you fuel their learning and your savings. If you're looking for a new career, Dollar General is looking for you. Hiring all positions and all shifts, they are looking for you with a starting pay up to $22 an hour with a $2,000 sign-on bonus. You can find details by going to dollargeneral.com slash careers or by texting DG Warehouse to 25000 Must be 18 or older, but again, starting pay up to $22 an hour with a $2,000 sign-on bonus. Contact them now, dollargeneral.com slash careers. We're back at Heatham Field in Fremont with Austin McNorton. I'm Rich Ray. We've got 539 left to go in this women's lacrosse matchup. The Culver Stockton Wildcats are leading Midland by a score of 9-7. to And it's a battle of attrition right now because a couple things have developed. Uh, first of all, the player that was shaken up was Brooke Donnelly. She was attended to on the far side. Looks like she's going to be able to return. Midland had called a timeout after the goal was scored by Chloe Harrison. And also we're getting information that Shea Peterson picked up her second yellow card for Midland. And so two yellows it constitutes a red. And so she's done for the day, which is not good news for the senior from St. George, Utah. So both teams will have to find a way to get it done mm-hmm. here. And Midland's been climbing uphill for about the last three quarters of the contest. As, uh, but they're within two right now, 9-7 to seven with 5.39 left to play. <clears throat> and it'll be Annika Turner taking the uh, battle for draw control against uh, Culver Stockton's Lauren Grieving. And a whistle. And that's going to be a, I think I call a violation on Midland. So it'll be draw control for Culver Stockton. And handling it will be Grieving. Grieving works right through the middle here and over to the right side. <clears throat> so Culver Stockton is going to try to chew up some clock, and Midland mm-hmm. needs a, a good pose- good defensive series here or a turnover here quickly. And this will be grieving. Yeah, it makes you wonder if they're going to start taking some chances, jump into passing lanes, and be aggressive on this end. Quarles will get it to Jackson. Jackson given a little bit of space here by Ashley Boyd. Now Jackson will all work her way around a screen to her right. Checked as she retreats. And had it knocked loose. And uh, the battle for it, it's on the turf. And still loose to the near side. Scooped up by the Wildcats. Handling it is Bella Olson. She'll find Lopez, who passes left side. Nice catch by Emily Green. And she'll give it back now to Olson. 30 seconds left here on the possession clock. 4.30 to go in the game. Culver Stockton up 9-7. to seven. Here's Grieving with it. Grieving will play at left side. So we'll find Green. Green up to the point. Now we'll work on over to the right side. Passes inside looking for Corals and end up behind her and knocked loose. And it looks like Edwards got popped in the goggles there and they play on as Midland comes up with the possession. This is Bowers. Bowers will play it to the right side looking for Harrison but can't connect and throws it behind her and it goes out of bounds. So mm. Midland turns it over. So it will Game be, of inches. Yep. Culver Stockton ball here under four minutes to go. Wildcats lead nine to seven. Culver Stockton led it at the half, seven to three. So Midland has made a charge here in the second half, which can't get over the hump as of yet. Pass near side, right on the money, right to Grieving. That was a, yeah. a, Into the wind. That's an impressive mm-hmm. throw. Yep. Grieving will play it up to the point. There's Quarles. 
Corals, a six-goal day today for the Wildcats. Over on the right wing. Not in a hurry here. Now we'll give it off to Grieving. Grieving works to her right. He, she puts a shot attempt on and scores. She goes top shelf. Mm. Lauren Grieving, the freshman, scores for Culver Stockton. And what a duo. You get Kaylin Quarles and Kay, uh, Lauren Grieving, two talented freshmen on the squad. And a big goal right there for Culver Stockton to make it a 10-7 to advantage. And I think what's been most impressive about their game today, they've controlled the pace of this one in the palm of their hands the entire time. On that possession, they're so patient, just waiting to make the right play. They just don't make like you would typically see like a freshman mistakes. And they're just so locked in, and they look like they've been playing this game for years. And it's just like anything that you do, you know, if you get a lead, you know, the time is mm -hmm. to your advantage, and you're able to uh, Absolutely. use it that way and uh, that's an example of you know uh, being taught the proper way how to do it so it's now 10 to 7 Culver Stockton leads it with 316 left to go in the contest and another draw control between Turner and Grieving and on this draw control it is going to be is it a du what do we have here dual violation regardless it's Midland with the ball and Annika Turner has it, and she's got it swatted away, and it's not foul here. It's called on Kaylin Quarles, and she will get a green card. So she'll come off for 30 seconds. Officials discuss things here briefly. The clock is stopped with 2.55 left to go. Okay, green card on Kaylin Quarles. Okay. And over zoom play with Midland with the possession. And Annika Turner has it in their stick. All right, back to play. Turner works right through two Wildcats up to the top of the point now. Spins back around, shot attempt, and she scores. Oh, my goodness. Annika, She's fired up, rightfully so. Annika Turner... <laughs> She's going to go want to go back and watch that one on film <laughs> because Bully right, ball. right off of the uh, the play, she spun between a couple of Wildcats, got up to the point of the fan, spun around, and scores. Annika Turner, the sophomore from Kingwood, Texas, gets Midland within two now. It's 10-8 to eight with 2.47 left to go. My goodness, that was such a physical play and tremendous footwork to fight through the contact and keep her balance and then the spin move to finish it off. Well, that's a highlight play. That's incredible. If you're asked the Warrior teammates who might be one of the stronger players on the team, <laughs> yeah, Annika is one of those. Shea Peterson is as well. And you can tell by the type of play that they uh, they, they, they use on the, on the field. And Annika that time just yeah, went right through the middle. Can can we call that beast mode? Can, yeah. Can, oh, can, can, yeah. Is that all right? She went through four different people and knocked two of them to the ground. All right. 2.47 to go. 10 to 8. Culver Stockton up by two. And this draw control was battled for and handled by the Wildcats. And quickly played left side. And Bella Olsen will scoop it up off the bounce. Olsen will back up here. And for the Wildcats here, the thought is chew the clock. And for Midland, you got to get a turnover. Yep. Pass far side, and it ricochets around, and wow. Jackson fights for it. Still loose on the ground, and who's going to win this ground ball? It comes all the way back by midfield, and will be scooped up by the Wildcats. To the left side, Harrison checking strongly. As it's played back by Jasmine Simpson, and now turned over. Midland has it, and here comes Madigan Maruzic. Maruzic on the right wing now, working her way into the fan off the right side. She will shoot, and it is going to be wide, but a whistle, and we might get a foul here on the shot attempt, which yeah. will give Midland a free possession, a free position shot. Yep, she got knocked to the ground when she got pushed from her left when she was shooting it. All right, so it'll be Madigan Maruzic who will get a free position shot onto the right side of the fan. 2.01 left to go in the contest. Culver Stockton's leading 10 to 8. Chance for the Warriors to potentially cut it in half. Free position, right side. Here comes Maruzic. And she goes backhanded. 
They're going to wave off the goal. They're going to say she was in the crease. Oh. She scored, but they say she's in the crease, and she is shaken up on the play. Maruzic went in and tried to backhand it, and uh, it actually went in, but she was in the crease. The official came in immediately and waved it off. Gosh. It was it was a right call. Okay, yeah, it was okay. Right call. She was she was in there. Yeah, uh, you had a better but, view of it. But than the me. but the effort was oh my goodness, uh, by Marusa to go in there off her left foot and kind of a backhanded attempt at the goal. <laughs> Kind of in the air, too. Just, just the effort to uh, try to get to go there is fantastic. She's going to come off here. She's going to get looked at. And coming on for her will be Alexis Rios. All right, we're under two minutes to go. Culver Stockton up 10-8, to eight, and the Wildcats have the possession. And Veronica's got to get it cleared here. She'll fire it near midfield against the wind, and she will get finding her teammate, Lauren Graving. Graving will pitch it backward. Graving gets knocked down by Chloe Harrison. And I think we're going to get a card here. Card. It's going to be a green card on Harrison. So Harrison's got to come off for 30. So Culver Stockton's up a player here with a minute 40 to go. Grieving with the ball. And we'll play it back to the middle. This is Simpson. Back left side, grieving. Trying to make a basket. Well, literally a basket catch. Pass is knocked down and stolen away. Coming up with it is Caitlin Bowers. Bowers will get it to the right wing. This is Edwards. Edwards is the top goal scorer for Midland on the year, working to the right side. Edwards has it back behind the net now. Edwards plays it over on the left wing. This is Turner. Turner works away and again shoots and scores. Annika Turner single-handedly has pulled mm -hmm. Midland within one goal here in the last two minutes. Single-handedly is right. She's kind of taking a page out of Harrison's playbook and said, I'm putting my head down. No one's going to stop me. Doesn't matter who's in my way. I'll run you over and put it in. I love the aggressiveness. Annika Turner scoring for Midland. The sophomore from Kingwood, Texas, now makes it 10-9. to I tell you what, regardless of the outcome of this contest, how about this uh, home finale for Midland this year? This is quite the contest. For my first women's lacrosse game, this has been, I think I've been treated pretty well. <laughs> I mean, this has been incredible. We've got a minute four left to play. 10-9, to nine, Culver Stockton leading. And draw control will be battled for between Grieving and, is that Harrison or Turner? I think it's Turner. Yeah. And on the draw control, let's see who gets it. Ball's on the ground. Turner falls on top of it, loses her goggles, and Jewel Bellman has it for Midland. All right, Midland with possession, under a minute to go, down a goal. Bellman on the left side, we've got a whistle. Stop the clock here. Turner was a little bit slow to get up, and she's grabbing the back of her head. She might have bumped right where her hair bright is, and that, and that hurts. Not that I would know, but, I mean, it, it certainly would be painful. All right, this will be Jewel Milliman who will get ready to get things going once again. Milliman off the left side. Passes it off. This is Bowers. Bowers shoots. It goes wide. And uh, it hustle to the near side. And Warriors try to keep it in play. And it will be awarded to Midland. 30 seconds left to go. Nelson passes back, knocked down, and stolen. Grieving comes up with it, but on her clear attempt, it goes to midfield, and Moore is the closest to one there for Midland, trying to pick it up off the turf. It will roll left side, near the sideline, goes out of bounds. It'll be Midland ball. Warriors have it. 14 seconds left to go. Clock still going. Moore trying to work it up the field to the right side. It's uh, stolen away by Lopez. Lopez is being checked by Turner. Lopez will spin back around and will give it to Jackson, and that's going to do it. Culver Stockton will hold on for the victory. What a contest here this afternoon at Heatham Field in Fremont, and the Culver Stockton Wildcats are able to hold on and defeat the Midland Warriors. The final score in this one this afternoon, Culver Stockton 10 and Midland 9. 
Culver Stockton improves its record now to straight up 500 on the season. The Wildcats now get to 5-5 five and five on the year as they'll be at St. Ambrose taking on the Bees coming up Wednesday at 4 in the afternoon. For Midland, the Warriors now fall to 3-9 and nine overall and now Midland will await uh, their opponent in the KCAC tournament that will be in St. Louis April 18th and most likely that would be against the top seed and nationally ranked fifth team in the country, the Missouri Baptist Spartans. 10-9, to nine, Culver Stockton wins it. We'll take a break, come back and check the final totals before we wrap things up at Heatham Field in Fremont. This is Midland Warrior Lacrosse on MidlandAthletics.com and BSD in Live. If you're looking for a new career, Dollar General is looking for you. Hiring all positions and all shifts, they are looking for you with a starting pay up to $22 an hour with a $2,000 sign-on bonus. You can find details by going to dollargeneral.com slash careers or by texting DG Warehouse to 25000 must be 18 or older, but again, starting pay up to $22 an hour with a $2,000 sign-on bonus. Contact them now, dollargeneral.com slash careers. Nebraska, where hardworking hands build incredible things. Built this thing from the ground up out of nothing. Gave it everything, now look at what it's given back. We know you put your heart into your business because that's what Nebraskans do. As a local bank, we put our hearts into helping you. Because we're not just a bank in Nebraska, we're Nebraska in a bank. Pinnacle Bank, the way banking should be. Limitless. When you believe, there's no limit to what you can achieve. You come to Midland for an education, but you will leave with so much more. We're a small campus with big opportunities. And whatever you need, we'll help you succeed. At Midland, it's your future, your way, with our support every day. Midland University. It's bold. It's an experience. It's family. It's limitless. Back at Heatham Field in Fremont with Austin McNorton, I'm Rich Ray in a very competitive non-conference contest here today. The uh, Midland Warriors taking on the Culver Stockton Wildcats, and Culver Stockton holds on to defeat Midland by a score of 10-9. to The Wildcats took a 7-3 to lead into halftime, but Midland outscores the Wildcats 3-1 to in the third quarter. 3-2 to in the fourth, but came up just one goal short as they fall 10-9 to in this one here today. A look at the second half scoring. Midland got on the board with 11-19 to go in the third. Madigan Ruzik was assisted by Madeline Edwards to make it 7-4. to for Culver Stockton. At 5.56 to go in the third, Alexis Marshall scored off a Madeline Edwards assist, making it 7-5. Then Midland pulled within one with 3.03 to go in the third when Madeline Edwards scored off an Alexis Marshall assist to make it 7-6. But Culver Stockton was able to answer less than a minute later. 2.27 to go in the third, Kaylin Quarles with her fifth goal of the day. She was assisted by Lauren Grieving to make it 8-6, and that would be the score at the end of the third quarter. Fourth quarter saw plenty of action. Kaylin Quarles found the net for the sixth time today, assisted by Bella Olson make it a 9-6 lead with 10-14 to play, but then Chloe Harrison scored unassisted uh, about four and a half minutes later with 5.39 to go to make it 9-7. Culver Stockton ended up getting what would uh, turn out to be the uh, most important goal of the contest, the 10th for the Wildcats. It came with 3.16 to go when Lauren Graving scored off a Kaylin Quarles assist to make it 10-7, but Annika Turner, she put everybody on her back <laughs> in the uh, final three Literally. minutes of the contest and tried to bring them all the way back. Uh, she scored unassisted at 2.47 to make it 10-8 then scores unassisted again at 107, 104 left to go to make it 10 to 9. Uh, but Midland just ran out of time in this one as Culver Stockton wins it by the final of 10 to 9. There were 11 penalties in the contest. Uh, the most important ones was that Shea Peterson picked up two yellows for Midland. She got one late in the first, and then she got a second yellow early in the fourth, and so she was out for the remainder of the contest. Uh, in uh, that second half, uh, the Warriors were called for three penalties, and Culver Stockton was called for two. Look at the individual stats. Uh, Kaylin Quarles, six goals and three assists on the day for the Wildcats. Lauren Graving had three goals and an assist for Culver Stockton as well. In goal for Culver Stockton, Jillian uh, uh, Jillian Vervonic, she ended up uh, giving up nine goals but had five saves. For Midland, 
Chloe Harrison scored three times on the day with an assist, a pair of goals for Madeline Edwards and two assists, and also two goals for Annika Turner on the afternoon. Myers uh, gave up 10 goals and had nine saves on the day. Shots uh, were controlled by Culver Stockton, 23 to 20. Ground balls, Midland 150 to Culver Stockton's 39. Uh, the uh, Wildcats were 17 of 26 on clears, Midland 17 of 29. Warriors with nine saves, the Wildcats with five. Total of 39 turnovers on Culver Stockton, 34 on Midland. So a lot of turnovers in this one here today. The win had a lot to do with that as well. Mm. Fouls, Midland committed 15, Culver Stockton with a total of 12. Draw controls, the Wildcats won 16 to the Warriors 7. And free position shots, Culver Stockton was 0 for 3 and Midland was 1 for 3 in the contest. But in this non-league battle, Culver Stockton wins it by a final score of 10 to 9. The Wildcats now 5 and 5 on the season. They'll be at St. Ambrose on Wednesday. Midland ends the regular season with a record of 3 and 9, but Midland will be in the KCAC tournament, and they will be in action on April the 18th in St. Louis, and we'll wait to see who they play and what time officially. Right now, we would assume it would be the fifth-ranked team in the country, Missouri Baptist, uh, as the number one overall seed in the KCAC tournament. So we wish the Warriors the best of luck uh, coming up in their KCAC action. And with that, we do want to recognize the seniors who have contributed to this program uh, for Midland University. Is this our last broadcast for them? Madeline Edwards, who uh, is uh, going to be the Warriors' all-time leading scorer, the five foot seven uh, midfielder from Highland Rants, Colorado. Haley Garing, a five foot four. Uh, midfielder from Pleasant Grove, Utah. Shea Peterson, five foot five defender from St. George, Utah. Uh, Christina Myers in goal, five foot nine at a Winter Haven, Florida. Victoria Orozco, who's a five foot five defender from Jacksonville, Florida. Those are the seniors on this Midland University women's lacrosse team. So we wish them the best of luck in the KCAC tournament, April the 18th, and hopefully also as well on the 20th in St. Louis. Our next broadcast of Midland University Athletics is tomorrow. We'll be at the Shilke Complex in Fremont at Chaplin Field, where the Midland 13th ranked softball team will be taking on the Morningside Mustangs. That doubleheader gets underway with first pitch of Game 1 at 5 o'clock tomorrow. All the action right here on MidlandAthletics.com and BSDN Live. Austin, good to see you. Good luck with the Man, Twins. thank you so much. Yeah, I need all the help I can I, get. I'm so, <laughs> I'm, I'm so glad that your hands are going to be full. Uh, <laughs> Quite literally. Yeah, so best of luck. And uh, we're looking forward to those uh, young ladies growing up. Oh, and, yeah. And, and just fun. absolutely just terrorizing you for the remainder of No your, doubt about that. Yeah, that's going to be awesome. <laughs> so no, no, we do wish you the best. And congratulations. Congratulations. Uh, for Austin McNorton, I'm Rich Ray. Once again, the final score in this one here today, Culver Stockton 10 and Midland 9. Until next time, this is Rich Ray saying good afternoon and so long from Heatham Field in Fremont, Nebraska.